road trip continues for the D-backs. One more here in Los Angeles before it's on to Coors Field in Denver. Arizona Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by Sanderson Ford. And the D-backs today look to chase Anderson to steal this series finale and turn their luck around against these Dodgers. It's D-backs baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. And good afternoon from Dodger Stadium. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume and Bob Brenly along the way. The series finale here against the Los Angeles Dodgers. And their series win versus the Dodgers last month. Notwithstanding, Bob, the Diamondbacks have got to figure out a way, plain and simple, to beat these guys. This rivalry, starting from last year, has simply become too one-sided. Absolutely one-sided. And let's be honest, the Dodgers have a, an unlimited payroll down here in Southern California, a very deep and talented pitching staff all the way to the last guy in the bullpen and a lot of great offensive players. But the Diamondbacks have to find a way, especially at home at Chase Field, to make the Dodgers a little less comfortable. Yeah, the Diamondbacks have lost nine of their last 11 here at Dodger Stadium and 18 of 24 versus L.A. dating back to last season. There's always a different nemesis, if you will. It used to be Matt Kemp, then it was Yasiel Puig. Now it's John Peterson. A good-looking young player. A couple home runs already in this series. Long home runs, including a grand slam in game one. I thought it was interesting last night. Three punch outs to start the game, but came back in his fourth at bat and hit a home run to center. Well, it's a battle of Andersons once again in this series. Chase on the mound for the Diamondbacks. The lefty Brett for the Dodgers. We'll have more on Chase Anderson start coming up today. And then it's first pitch, the D-backs and the Dodgers from Los Angeles. Arizona is brought to you in part by Cox Gigablast. How will you live the gig life? By Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's blazing chicken sandwich. Our exclusive coverage of Diamondbacks baseball continues on this glorious Sunday afternoon here in Southern California. Third and final game of the series. 
Dodgers and the Diamondbacks. Some Todd Walsh inside the Arizona Diamondbacks dug out to steal a line from Vin Scully here yesterday. It's Anderson versus Anderson, sounding like a law firm, but this is a rematch of a, a pitching matchup we saw back in early April at Chase Field. But for the Arizona Diamondbacks, let's focus in on Chase Anderson. In that game, he went five innings, gave up three runs on six hits, but the pitch count was elevated. I had a chance to talk to him just the other day about that game and also what it might be like pitching on a day like today where it's hot and it's dry and it's a bit of a launching pad. I didn't attack the hitters. The first couple of innings I did, and then after that I uh, kind of went back to nibbling because I was scared. To, I wouldn't say scared, but I was just kind of, you know, I wanted to hit the corners a little better. But, you know, you got to break the plate into thirds and just kind of hit the thirds. And once you get, you know, 1-2, one, 0-2, one, two, oh, two, you can really expand the zone then. So, you uh, just not throw 100 pitches in five innings, hopefully 100 pitches in nine innings. I pitched in Reno a couple years ago, and if you if you pitch there, I mean, you know, pop-ups go out there. <laughs> so here, I think in the big leagues anywhere, you just got to understand uh, you can't control the elements. You control what you do and how you locate the ball and just trying to keep the ball low in the zone. If, if I do that, get ground balls, and, you know, those ground balls don't go over the fence. There you have it, Chase Anderson. We'll see if he can overcome an issue these starters have had of late, certainly, and that's getting touched early in this game. But, again, it is hot. It is dry. Last night the ball was carrying early and then not so much late as it cooled off. But today that could be a different story. See how it plays out together when we we'll come back. First pitch, Steve Bethune and Bob Brindley have the call. It's the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks from Dodger Stadium. And it's next. Dodgers who continue playing well at home this season. They are going for their third home sweep of the year already. They swept Seattle and Colorado here earlier this year. In fact, the Dodgers have won 10 of their last 11 games here at Dodger Stadium. The Arizona Ford starting pitcher for LA, 27-year-old left-hander Brett Anderson. Here's assistant hitting coach Mark Grace. He sinks the baseball, gets a lot of ground balls, uh, and, and this is something that we, we talk about with sinker ballers, just like uh, you have to see the ball up against them. If the ball starts at your thighs, it's going to dip out of the strike zone. If it starts at your belt, those sinker ballers will flatten out a little bit, and the ball and the ball will just stay right there, and, and those are always fun to hit. Brett Anderson, his fifth start this year. The ERA right at five and a half. He is winless in his last two starts. And besides the sinker ball, Brett Anderson has a full complement, throws a slider, a curveball, a straight change up as well. But when push comes to shove, especially with runners on base, he's going to go to that heavy sinking fastball trying to get grounders. Ender and Ciarte batting 321 leads it off for the Diamondbacks, and we are underway 
in the series finale at Dodger Stadium. Mark Ripperger is our plate umpire. And another start for Ender against a left-hand pitcher. He's hitting 375 versus lefties this year. Uribe in on the grass at third. And there's a strike. It's one and one. 321 for Enciarte. And a pair of hits last night from the leadoff spot. Scored a run, drove in a run. He was on base twice. He's ahead two balls and a strike. Beautiful day here in Los Angeles. Not too hot, actually. Nice and comfortable. A little breeze blowing out to dead center field. Ender shoots it foul down the left field line. And it's two and two. Brett Anderson and Chase Anderson. Diamondbacks trying to salvage the series finale, and then it's on to Colorado after the ball game here today. This is away, and it's full three balls and two strikes. A.J. Pollock is on deck. And Ciarte slaps it to shortstop. Jimmy Rollins is there. Run away. Rollins back in the starting lineup tonight. Here's the starting nine for Diamondback skipper Chip Hill. Number 11. Ender Inciarte in left field at the top of the order. A.J. Pollock out in center field making his way to the plate right now. Paul Goldschmidt at first base batting third. Mark Trumbo out in right field. Yasmani Tomas at third. Chris Owings. Tuffy Gosowich and Nick Ahmed all back in the lineup at second catcher and short, and Chase Anderson on the mound. A.J. Pollock looks at ball one. A.J. batting 301 for the year. He was hitless in last night's game, one for four in Friday's series open. And the Dodgers put the shift on with three infielders on the left-hand side against the right-hand hitting Pollock. Goldie on deck. He homered here last night. A.J. feasting on left-hand pitching this year. Just gets a piece there and stays alive. Anderson has struggled lately coming off a no decision against the Giants last Monday right here at Dodger Stadium. He gave up three runs on five hits, lasted less than five innings. And he was beaten by the Giants in his start previous to that in San Francisco. He has failed to make it through five innings his last two times out. A.J. gets this up in the air. Very shallow right field. Andre Ethier coming in. Two down. A look at the Dodgers around their left-hander. It's their mid-first bank starting defense. A little different look today for Don Manningly. He'll have Alex Guerrero in left field. Jock Peterson in center. Andre Ethier in right field. Juan Uribe has been absent the first two games of this series. He'll be at third base this afternoon. Jimmy Rollins, Howie Kendrick make up the double play combo with Adrian Gonzalez at first. A.J. Ellis doing the catching and lefty Brad Anderson on the mound. Justin Turner with home runs in each of the first two games of this series. Sits and Uribe starts. He's got an 11-game hitting streak. And Paul Goldschmidt, who homered on the first pitch he saw yesterday, swinging at the first pitch much more often this year, takes a look at ball one. He's at 341 on the year. Eighth in the league in hitting. Second behind Giancarlo Stanton for the National League RBI League. On the ground to Uribe at third. It's a quick one, two, three, first for Brent Anderson. We are just underway in Los Angeles.
there on the mound. He watched Ruby De La Rosa do that in his start on Friday night. So yesterday we asked Chase Anderson for his keys to this afternoon's start. Here he is. Honestly, just get ahead. I watched Ruby pitch last night, and, you know, that one inning just got to him. You know, I think it's just the walks, you know, getting ahead of guys, kind of nibbling a little bit, and the next thing they get the bases loaded, and Peterson comes up and, you know, hits a, a changeup, you know, for a grand slam. And uh, after that, he retires up to something like 10, 11. He just keeps going. He got through the lineup really fast. And, you know, I just cause he went back to attack and pitching like he knows how to pitch. And I think if I just go out there and attack the strike zone, be aggressive early, he has success against these guys. And he is our Arizona Ford starting pitcher today for the Diamondbacks. And gave up eight hits in five and a third in that last start against the Rockies. However, six of the eight hits came in the first two innings, including a three-run bomb by Justin Morneau in the first. And be careful here with the rookie center fielder, the leadoff man, Jock Peterson, hitting 292 now with six home runs on the year. He has been a force in this series. He's got two hits in the series, both homers, and his OPS is third best in all of baseball. Second in the National League behind only Adrian Gonzalez. Backs overshift on the right-hand side. Chris Owens, the second baseman out in shallow right field, and Yasmani Tomas playing third is over there in the second base spot. A ball and two strikes on Peterson. We'll see if Chase Anderson can attack that strike zone. Coming off his first decision of the season, as Bob mentioned, a loss to the Rockies in his previous start last Monday at Chase Field. Good start for Chase. Peterson strikes out. He struck out in his first three at bats here last night. Short stop. The lineup for Don Mattingly's division leading Dodgers. Well, we've seen center fielder Jock Peterson strike out to start the ball game for the Dodgers. Jimmy Rollins making his way to the plate. He'll be at short. Howie Kendrick at second base. Adrian Gonzalez at first. Alex Guerrero in left field with Andre Ethier in right. Juan Uribe at third. A.J. Ellis doing the catching for lefty Brett Anderson. Jimmy Rollins, the shortstop. Shows button, looks at strike one. Nick Ahmed, the only defender on the left-hand side, comes charging in for the Diamondbacks. Rollins slumping. He's under 190 for the year with two homers. Rollins checked into the ball game late last night. Had a tack on RBI single in the eighth inning. He was 0 for 3 in Friday's series opener with a walk and a strikeout. Chase Anderson is doing what he said he would set out to do. That's attack the strike zone and throw strikes, challenge these Dodger hitters. He's ahead one and two. Rollins can't hold up. Two strikeouts for Chase, and this is refreshing for Diamondbacks pitchers who have struggled to get through clean first innings. Jeremy Hellickson gave up two in the first last night. But so far, Chase, two batters, two strikeouts. And up the ladder fastball. Letter high. Jimmy Rollins just cannot check his swing. Good start for Chase Anderson and the D backs. However, we've seen two quick outs in an inning recently, and uh, it suddenly gets out of control. Finish it off. Now he Kendrick. He has batted in the cleanup spot most of this year. He's batted third in the lineup in this series. He's a 294 with three homers. So rocking into the seats. Take a look at the Diamondbacks around. Chase Anderson, it's our mid-first bank starting defense. This afternoon, we'll have Andrew Inciarte in left, A.J. Pollock in center, Mark Trumbo over in right field. The infield will be Osmani, Tomas, and Nick Ahmed on the left side. Chris Owings and Paul Goldschmidt on the right side with Tuffy Gosowicz doing the catching for right-hander Chase Anderson. Well, Kendrick lost the handle on the bat and almost hit Adrian Gonzalez, who was standing in the on-deck circle. A little too close to the Dodger first baseman. Well, there are D-backs fans who would say it didn't come close <laughs> enough. <laughs> well, <laughs> now, now. Kendrick had a pair of hits last night. He scored a run, drove in a run, including the eventual game winner against Evan Marshall in the seventh inning. That broke up a 4-4 tie. Turned into it, and it got him. So Kendrick awarded first base hit by the pitch. Well, you called it right, partner. He did turn right into that pitch. 
First base and Hale is going to come over and have a conversation with Jeff Kellogg. Kellogg is the crew chief here, the first base umpire. Is this about making an effort to get out of the way of the ball? Yeah, maybe that or possibly the ball hit the knob of the bat, which would make it a foul tip or a foul ball, rather. This perhaps asking if the crew chief, Jeff Kellogg, had a little better view of it from down there at first base. And uh, you see Glenn Sherlock after communicating to the video room said, nope, there's no argument here. Yeah, right in on the hands there. Didn't sound like it hit the bat. No, it didn't. I'm pretty sure it got him in the hand just the way Howie Kendrick reacts, although, you know, it is L.A. There's a lot of actors down here. Showmanship. <laughs> so here's Gonzalez in there at 371 on the year. And he is tied with the Reds' Todd Frazier for the league lead with eight homers. He leads the National League in OPS just ahead of his teammate, John Peterson. Shift is on for the Diamondbacks on the right-hand side. And you said it. Get through this clean first, Bob. This guy is dangerous. He tied the game in the first inning last night with an RBI double. His 10th double of the year. Singled and scored a run in Friday's series opener. Chase was really in a groove, striking out Peterson and Rollins to open up the ball game, but now he's got a two-out base runner, and the momentum has slowed a bit for Chase out there. Kendrick holds it first. He misses away. It's two balls and no strikes. Boy, really good 2-0 changeup right there. Obviously, 2-0, a uh, favorable hitter's count. Most guys count on getting a fastball in that situation. Gonzalez looking fastball, but Chase Anderson pulled the string. Good changeup. You see that just drop and tail down and away from the left-hand hitter. Kendrick holds it first. That one misses away, and it's 3-1. Uh, Chase Anderson's comments uh, about attacking the strike zone, I think that's meant as a general rule against the Dodgers, but uh, this is one guy you have to be extremely careful with right here, and Chase uh, scooting the ball out on the corners a little bit more against Gonzalez. Hendrick holds it first. Big swing and a miss there from Gonzalez, and it's full three and two. Away, away, away. Are you give up a single to the opposite field off the bat of Adrian Gonzalez and, uh, and be happy, but if you make a mistake from the middle of the plate in, uh, you may not get the baseball back. That's his happy zone. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Kendrick will be off of the pitch from first. Goldie playing behind the runner. There he goes, and Gonzalez hits it up into the second deck. Another 20-pitch inning for a Diamondback starter in the first. This has been too often a recurring theme. Kendrick takes off again. Gonzalez a roller to Goldie, the backhander. He'll take it himself, and they strand the two-out base runner. We go to the second inning. No score, Dodger State.
Sunday, May the 10th, you'll get to spend quality family time during the Diamondbacks game against the Padres, and she'll get to take home this special Mother's Day ladies' tea courtesy of Fry's Food Stores. Get your tickets right now at dbacks.com, and we'll see you at the ballpark on Mother's Day, May 10th. A lot of kids in the house here today in Los Angeles. Little League Day parade before the ball game. Mark Trumbo. A big swing and a miss as we open up the second inning. I think every little leaguer in the greater Los Angeles area was out here at the field today. They paraded them around the warning track. It took about an hour. It's pretty impressive. Good to see that many youngsters playing ball. It is Yasiel Puig Youth Jersey Day here at the ballpark. So there's a lot of Puig jerseys running around in boys' medium sizes. Trumbo bangs it into right for a leadoff single. That's Mark's first hit in this series. Third baseman, number 24, Yasmani Tomas. Yasmani Tomas. 10 for 32 on the year. A pair of doubles for RBI guys. He has reached base safely in every game he started this season. And he barreled up a couple of balls here last night. One that banged off the left field wall. Another one that Jock Peterson caught right in front of the 395 sign in dead center field. Yeah, seemingly getting more comfortable by the day. We talked about it at length throughout spring training in the early part of the season. A lot of adjustments for this young man, but he seems like he's finally starting to settle in and uh, comfortable with his role with the ball club. He's hit safely in four straight, a pair of hits in this series. And one of the more impressive things about Yasmani Choma so far. The on-base percentage is 389. He's had some very good at-bats. He has walked four times this year and struck out only twice. And he's had it roll in the last four games. A one hopper right to Rollins. Kendrick. And he's had another play. Well, once again, Tomas hits it to the left side, but right at the Dodgers' shortstop. Yeah, hard one hopper right at Jimmy Rollins. That's a tailor-made double play. The first thing you need for a double play is a hard hit ball right at one of your defenders, and that time Brett Anderson was able to get it. So two down for Chris Owings back in the lineup tonight, starting at second base. CO at 215 for the year. He's hit safely in eight of his last ten games. And the day off here yesterday. 0 for 4 in Friday series opener. That's now the three-game hit streak. Speaking about patience with Yasmani Tomas, I think, Bob, that's something that we both like to see from Chris Owings up there. He's always been a very aggressive hitter, but uh, Friday a little too aggressive. Yeah, swung on a lot of first pitches, and uh, as I've said many times, there's nothing wrong with swinging at the first pitch as long as it's a strike that you're looking for. Even in the 2-0 count, there a pitch elevated up and out over the plate, an off-speed delivery from Brett Anderson. I find it hard to believe that's the pitch he was looking for, 2-0, a change up, up and out of the strike zone. Just a little more discipline, a little more patience. Gets this one up in the air to right field, an easy play for Ethier. We head to the bottom of the second, no score at Dodgers game.
Hollywood. Log on to FoxSportsArizona.com slash beat the heat and enter the word Hollywood for a chance to win a trip to San Diego for the July 4th weekend. Throughout May, we will give you the word of the day during the game. And once you see it, go to FoxSportsArizona.com slash beat the heat and enter that word. The more times you enter, the better your chances to win. For more information, visit FoxSportsArizona.com. The password is Hollywood. Well, you're starting to sound more and more like Alan Ludden every day. <laughs> Dumb door was so dumb. Oh, that was Gene Raber. Yeah. And uh, here's Alex Guerrero. Alan Ludden was on Password for almost 20 years. He was the host of that show. And with his wife, Betty White. Betty she was White, a yeah. great panelist on that show. She... Guerrero hard to third. Tomas smothers it. Steps up and throws him out. A nice backhand scoop by Goldie. Asmani Tomas with some... Outstanding defense down there at third. Right fielder. Number third base very much a reactive position. A crossover step and a dive. Gets Tomas to the spot. Nicely done. Throwing the dirt over there to Goldie, who picks it cleanly for the out at first. Full extension from Tomas. You just take that for granted down there with America's first baseman. Now you take it for granted, but that wasn't an easy pick. That ball very nearly hit right at the edge of the infield grass and the dirt over there at first base. Not a short hop, a long hop. Andre Ethier. Another start in right field. Remember the Dodgers without Carl Crawford and Yasiel Puig both on the DL, so Ethier playing a lot these days and doing well at 308. He has homered four times this season, matching his total from all of last year. At number four here Friday nights. And that play by Goldie at first base. The short hop that's right in front of your glove is an easy one to pick. You just kind of smother the ball with that big first baseman's mid, no problems. But these longer hops, well, those are a little tougher to deal with. That ball's a good five or six feet out in front of Paul Goldschmidt. There could be some side rotation on the baseball when it hits in the dirt, causing it to move one way or the other. But Goldie always seems to be in the right spot. We saw Chase Anderson being very careful with Adrian Gonzalez, and he's doing the same here with another dangerous left-hand hitter, Andre Ethier. 3-0 is fouled back. Well, the offense has been there at times and at other times not there for the D-backs. The pitching has been up and down, but the defense has been outstanding all season long. Only 10 errors on the year. The Miami Marlins uh, have made only six errors. They lead in fielding percentage. Three and one misses up and away. It's a one out walk for Ethier. Third baseman, number five. Well, here is for the first Uribe. time in this series Juan Uribe. And it's just under 280 for the year. Only three extra base hits in the season's first month, but he's got an 11 game hitting streak. And Justin Turner, who started Friday and Saturday and homeward in both those games, is a spectator. What do you got to do to stay in the lineup around here? An 11-game hitting streak wouldn't get Uribe in there on Friday and Saturday. Don Madeline trying to shuffle these guys through, both at third base and left field. And he has insisted that Uribe is still the guy down there, hitting 324 during his 11-game streak. Of course, when Alex Guerrero started hitting home runs, he became a media darling here at Atlanta. Mattingly said Uribe is a guy who had a good year for the Dodgers last year. You just don't toss him aside, and a couple of games are not going to change what the coaches are trying to do. Mattingly said a lot of that is also based on playing defense, which is a big edge for Uribe at third. A ball and a strike. Mattingly has Uribe, he's got Turner, he's got Guerrero, who can all play third base. Enrique Hernandez in the mix as well. He started at shortstop last night. But even without 
Crawford and Puig. They have different options in the corners. Ethier is manning right field these days, but Guerrero can play some left. Scott Van Slyke can play some left. Guerrero out there this afternoon. One and two on Uribe. Carl Crawford out with a torn oblique muscle right now. And Yasiel Puig, you see there, he went out last weekend with a left hamstring. Hard to third, Tomas, can they start the 5-4-3? Yes, they can, they roll it. And Chase Anderson is out of the second inning. He erases that one-out walk. Good defensive inning for Yasmani Tomas. We head to the third. No score in LA. is brought to you in part by Chaz Roberts, air conditioning and plumbing, choose Chaz. And by Tire Pros, for the best selection of Continental and general brand tires, visit one of the 22 locally owned Arizona Tire Pros locations. Roberts, air conditioning and plumbing, choose Chaz. And by Tire Pro, the best selection of Continental and general brand tires, visit one of the 22 locally owned Arizona Tire Pros locations. Well, I've got some bad news for you, BB. We just missed by a few days Tommy Lasorda Garden Gnome Night here at Dodger Stadium. That's coming up this week. Tommy signing autographs for the kids, the Dodger legend. Tough he goes to wish leads off the Arizona third against Brent Anderson. There's a giant eight-foot-tall Tommy Lasorda bobblehead out there in right field. Tommy's all over the ballpark. Back to Andy Green at third. Well, there's even a Tommy Lasorda eatery out there uh, beyond the right field fence. You get you chicken parmesan or a meatball sandwich or a slice of za. I don't think Tommy's actually out there flipping the crust for the uh, pizza. Or He's anything. got people to do that. He's got people. <laughs> Tuffy goes a wish. The start behind the plate this afternoon. Tuffy at just under 170 for the year. He was 0 for 3 at the plate on Friday night. Two for his last 22 up there. Roller to second base right to Kendrick. Well, the lower Good part start. of the Diamondback Good order, the guys that have been struggling as of late. No wings, goes a wish on that. All sat out last night's ball game. They're all back in there today. And here is Nick Ahmed getting the start at shortstop, 133 on the year. 0 for 3 with a strikeout in Friday's ball game. Well, occasionally that day off to just sit in the dugout and kind of watch the game and absorb uh, things that are happening out there on the field. Just uh, clear your mind a little bit from your struggles and then get right back in there and hopefully pick things up a little bit. 
Just one hit in the ball game so far for both teams. Mark Trumbo was single, a lead off the second. He was erased on a double play ball. Another ground ball to Kendrick. This is what Brett Anderson does when he's effective. He has always been a very successful ground ball pitcher. You heard Mark Ray say that at the top of the show. Ground ball rates the previous two seasons of better than 60%. That number is down a touch, actually, this year. Anderson's fly ball rate is up a bit, but when he's at his best, he will generate what you've just seen, a lot of easy ground ball outs. Chase Anderson looks at strike one. Brett Anderson faced the D-backs in his first start this year. That was April 10th back in Chase Field. Gave up three runs, five hits. He went six innings. Got a no decision in that ball game. It was a D-backs 4-3 win. Beat the Mariners in his next start here at Dodger Stadium. That's still his only victory of the year. One and two now. And he gets the strikeout. First strikeout for Brett Anderson. No score here in L.A. Going to face Brett Anderson, the second hitter in this inning. Our Valley Honda keys to the game. We've used this before. We're going to continue to use it. We've had our eye on you for some time now, Mr. Anderson. And the a, Matrix. The Matrix. And a victory on getaway day always shortens that flight to the next city. we have scheduled for an hour and 45-minute flight to Denver. Let's make it a little shorter with a victory here today. You got a uh, movie queued up on the old iPad there? As a matter of fact, I don't. This is the first uh, flight in a oh. long time. I don't have anything ready to go. Caught you shorthanded. I'll just look over your shoulder, whatever you're watching. Old baseball games. <laughs> A.J. Ellis. A.J., three hits and 20 at-bats to start the year, has become the backup catcher here in L.A. Just turned 34 years old last month. He's only made six starts behind the plate. And four of those have come catching Clayton Kershaw. He has become Kershaw's personal catcher. And Kershaw is scheduled to start for the Dodgers tomorrow night. Diamondbacks just missed him. Kershaw will start tomorrow at Milwaukee. L.A. plays a four-game set at Miller Park starting tomorrow.
finding foul balls over that first base dugout as a right-handed hitter. That's a pretty sure indicator that your timing's just a tad off. Ellis very tardy on his swings and this at bat. Ball and two strikes. We talk about the Brewers. Dodgers go there next. Man, are they strong. They're, they're gonna have to blow that thing up. They're gonna start selling off some pieces, I think. It's Six and eighteen going into play today. Only three and ten at Miller Park. There's another one that's near the Diamondback dugout and in the seats. Yeah, they let Ivani Gallardo go. Or moved him, I should say, before he becomes a free agent after this year. He's in Texas now. Running out of bodies, are about to get Carlos Gomez back from injury. A lot of speculation, actually, today. A national columnist wrote about that potential Brewers who could be moved at the deadline. Mark Melvin's phone will be ringing from contenders looking for help. Two and two. Carlos Gomez just back today. In fact, for the Brewers, a couple of hits. Yeah, some very movable contracts. Gomez, Jonathan Lucro. Down the left field line. Now he's hitting the foul the other direction. So AJ Ellis is spraying the ballpark here. Doesn't do very well hitting the ball into fair territory, but <laughs> foul. He's outstanding. The fans love him. <laughs> Ninth pitch of the at bat coming up. Tapper Ahmed is going to have to charge here. He makes a nice play. Nick Ahmed throws him out. Pitcher number 35. Boy, Nick, don't ever lose your glove. This guy is one of the premier defenders in baseball. In just a short time, he's been in the major leagues. I mean, this is not an easy play to glove and throw all in one motion, even though Ellis does not run particularly well. That was a tough play, and they got it over there in plenty of time. Got him by two steps. Brent Anderson, the pitcher. Well, Nick has never been a quick starter offensively either. There, there is some patience involved with him at every level. Pretty sure that the bat will eventually come around, but the glove has been sensational. There's the strike. It's 0 and 2. I don't know if you're uh, considering joining Twitter, but if you do, follow Brett Anderson because he is hilarious. He is one of the best Twitter follows out there. Very sharp sense of humor. Not so much a hitter, but he's good on the social media. Three strikeouts for Chase. He still reminds me of Adam Dunn. <laughs> Big burly guy, got the beard, resembles him a little bit facially. Not so much swinging the bat. Although that looked a lot like Adam Dunn. I was going to say he did strike out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brett Anderson was watching the fight last night, along with all the rest of the suckers. And uh, this was his tweet after the fight last night. Biggest shock of the night. With an eye toward future, Mayweather will put earnings in low-risk investments with a small yield potential. <laughs> money made a little money last night. Yeah, there's a good chance he spent most of it today. <laughs> Chuck Peterson bought another plane. Peterson struck out his first time. Everybody was disappointed with the big fight last night. A lot of dancing around and apparently not too much action. We were here. Well, there was a lot of action in the back and forth ball game between these two. Big time swing and a miss as he chased a high fastball. This guy will strike out a lot. Strikeout rates in the minor leagues have gone up every year. We'll go right back up there again. See if you can't get him to chase another fastball up and out of the zone. At this point, it's just about the only flaw in his game. Did it again. Got a piece, though. Archie Bradley also took to Twitter last night about the fight. He, 115 mile an hour ball to the face. Who fought tonight? <laughs> Archie ready to go. Toe to toe. 
Robbie Ray will take his start Tuesday night at Coors Field as Peterson lays off that one. So we'll get a couple of looks at Robbie Ray while Archie Bradley recovers. Although if it were up to Archie, I'm sure that he would be starting Tuesday. Oh, yeah. And batting fourth. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> one and two. Peterson strikes out for the second time of the ball game. Chased a bad pitch there. Chase Anderson has four strikeouts now. No score at Dodger Stadium as we head to the fourth. Tommy Lasorda bobblehead here at the park and the garden gnome that's coming up. But here's a little twist on that. This is a Don Mattingly Nashville Sounds bobblehead, a retro one. He was back there in the early 80s, was the Yankees minor league player of the year. And uh, we're actively involved right now in a Todd's Garage giveaway. Don was on the pregame show today, blessed us. It is a rare bobblehead, only a thousand of them made, if you can believe it. It's a long story how it came into our hands, but we're, we're trying to move it right now, as you know, the the, the manifest of uh, Todd's Garage is, you know, we got to liquidate and move all this stuff. That's the point of it. So there it is. It's a beauty. Don't know if you guys have any of these, but we're, we're going to get rid of it today. Everything must go. It must go. Is it signed? No, you know, I didn't do that. Oh, all right. I think, Don, I don't know if you saw the pregame show. I, I, I think he actually wanted it. Well, I, I did see that, and he claimed never to have worn that uniform yep. and also never to have had that mustache. Yes. Other than that, it's a dead ringer. <laughs> yes, other than all those things in the <laughs> logo for the oil company. Yes. That one gets underneath Anderson and under Kendrick and Enciarte's aboard. It, it's a cool bobblehead. It certainly is a one-of-a-kind item. So. Yes, thank you for that. Those uniforms, they look like those old Angels uniforms. Yeah. Remember when the Angels had those softball uniforms? Yeah. This one got under two Dodgers in the infield. Yeah, a little squibber that gets past Brett Anderson on the mound. Kendrick tries to make the barehanded play. Can't come up with it cleanly. I'm sure that'll go down as an infield hit for Ender Inciarte. It's on the board. Second hit of the ball game, both by the Diamondbacks. And now here comes A.J. Pollock. Well, Ender continues to find ways to hit left-hand pitching. A.J. flying out to center his first time. Oh, there's a strike. Yeah, we've seen the Dodgers uh, shift for A.J. Pollock a little bit, moving Howie Kendrick almost directly behind the bag out there at second, and with Adrian Gonzalez holding on Ender Inciarte. Look at the size of this hole on the right side of the infield. Hello. Woo! On the plane over there. Not sure enough, A.J. hits it right to Rollins. Kendrick turns it. Second double play turned by the Dodger infield. Brett Anderson has that ground ball working here today. 
Yeah, we heard Gracie talk about it uh, at the top of the show. You got to see the ball up. Anything that's mid-thighs is going to end up down below the bottom of the strike zone, resulting in a lot of easy grounders. Try to lay off those pitches, make him get the ball up a little bit. A 6-4-3 DP after Trumbo let off the second with a single, and now one in the fourth after Enciarte's leadoff hit. Here's Goldie. Goldie, a two-run homer last night off Scott Baker, his sixth of the year. He had a pair of hits in Friday's series open. And we should point out that Goldie homered off Brett Anderson back at Chase Field last month in Anderson's first start this year. Well, that homer that Goldie hit last night, I mean, I, I mentioned it at the time. He hits some majestic home runs, but I don't think I've ever seen him hit one higher than the one he hit last night. That was light tower high. Oh, my. Man. Man, this ball went straight up off the bat. It made a great noise, obviously, right there, but I thought it was too high. Too high. What do you mean too high? <laughs> two and two. Forget about it. It's gone. It's full three and two. Trumbo would be next. Just does get a piece of it. Already six grounders generated off the Diamondback bats by lefty Brett Anderson. That ground ball has worked for him so far. Another 3 2 to Goldie. There's one more. It stays. Oh, no, it's foul. Uribe cuts it off in front of the bag and gave Morales signals foul ball. Brett Anderson originally a Diamondback draft pick, of course, second rounder back in 06. Now with L.A. on a one-year $10 million deal he got last December. He just was able to make only eight starts with the Rockies last year. His only year in Colorado. Long-time Oakland Athletic. Ninth pitch coming up. Anderson has had very low pitch counts in the ball game. A 13 pitch first, a 9 pitch second, and a 10 pitch third. We'll do it one more time. to third. That's a fair ball. Look at Uribe. Go get it. But Goldie gets it out. Up. Somehow Uribe kept that from getting up the left field line and Goldie has a two out single. Number 15. Barnes. Uribe still has the solid glove down there at third base but doesn't have the arm to make this particular play. All of his momentum carrying him into foul territory. Ends up throwing a three hopper over there to Adrian Gonzalez and Goldie legs it out for a hit. He said the glove is still the edge for Uribe at third base. And just saw why. He can still go get him. A 10 pitch single for Goldschmidt. Diamondbacks have a two on base runner for Mark Trumbo, who singled his first time up. Gonzalez holding the runner at first. Goldie bluffs towards second and stays put. There's a ball run on. Hey fans, anytime the D-backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Wind has picked up a little bit out there in center field. It's blowing across left to right. 
it's going pretty good out there. And those are some big flags. You don't see him move that much usually. Bounce to third. Uribe one more time. Brent Anderson and Chase Anderson. It's a pitcher's duel at Dodger Stadium. They score. But both guys very effective attacking the strike zone and getting ground ball outs. Look at the out distribution here so far today. They combined 14 ground ball outs. Both guys keep the ball down and on the ground. So far, the Diamondbacks, three hits, all singles. Dodgers still looking for their first base as Jimmy Rollins leads off the bottom of the fourth. Rollins, when he was in Philadelphia, waived the no trade clause in his contract to clear the way for his trade here to L.A. A bunt for a base hit. Anderson is on it, and he throws him out. Nice play by Chase. One pitch, one out in the fourth. Oh, a nice attempt to bunt for a base hit. Even nicer defensive play by Chase Anderson, bouncing off that mound. Bare hands and fires all in one motion to Goldie. That's about as good as you can do it right there, Chase. He's got it rolling here tonight, 51 pitches. He's walked one, he's got four strikeouts, and here's Howie Kendrick. He's also hit a batter. It was Kendrick back in the first. <laughs> Kendrick's been a nice pickup for L.A. He's hit safely in 17 of 23 games this year. Nine multi-hit games, just under 300 for the season. And Chase away from Chase. This is something that needs to improve. So far, so good. Chase comes into today winless in his last eight road starts. Last road win came last June in Colorado. Gave up a total of just six runs over his first three starts this season. Numbers on the road for Chase. 0-4, the ERA at 5.5. Off to a good start this year, but last time out against the Rockies at home, gave up five runs all earned on eight hits, went five and a third. And the eight hits allowed tied a season high. He has yet to give up a base hit so far here today. 2-2 two and two to Kendrick. Rounder. This one has Ahmed behind the bag. Two up, two down to the fourth. Oh, roller up the middle. It brings up Gonzalez. Gonzalez. 
Nice mix of pitches so far in this game for Chase Anderson. There are times when he kind of falls in love with his changeup and wants to throw it first pitch. He wants to throw it behind in the count. He wants to throw it ahead in the count, but he's mixed in some good fastballs, a couple of good curveballs in the game in the early going. I mean, the Dodgers are well aware of how good Chase Anderson's changeup is, so use it sparingly in the early going. And that changeup is the big weapon here. Only seven starting pitchers in baseball last year had a better strikeout rate with a changeup than Chase Anderson. A good pitch with good movement on it and a 10 mile an hour difference off his fastball. Shift is on for Gonzalez, who looks at strike one. Good first pitch curveball there. Just roll it up there, steal a strike, and then go to work. See the defensive shift. Is the curveball, you think, for him the pitch that can take Chase from good to very good? Because we know about the fastball changeup combo, but if that curveball becomes a swing in this pitch, he's really got something good. Gonzalez has to dodge his first hit. Two out single in the fourth. Yeah, I think anytime you can add a third pitch to your arsenal, uh, it's, it's only going to help you. And just like we saw in this at bat, even though it results in an Adrian Gonzalez base hit to right, Gonzalez wasn't looking for a curveball first pitch, so Chase just rolled it right up there in the middle of the strike zone, ahead in the count, 0-1. And, and then you go to work. Pitch was down. Gonzalez went down there and got it. Here's Guerrero, who grounded out his first time. That base hit into right field by Gonzalez. Watch the rosin either off of the ball or the bat at the point of contact. Leaves a little cloud of dust out there in front of home plate. 60 pitches for Chase, 40 for strikes. One to one on Guerrero. And this is the start that the Diamondbacks and Chase Anderson have been looking for. Efficient, effective, one walk, four strikeouts. He's given up only one hit. Guerrero 0 and 2. Alex Guerrero, a pinch hit single in the eighth inning last night. He started Friday's game when hitless with a walk and a strikeout. Adding 400 on the year. He's got five hitters. Up in the air, Tuffy is under it. Gonzalez takes off and he's in there. Sounded like it hit Tuffy's shin guard and bounced straight up over his head. I think it may have gotten the mask actually. It looked like it climbed right up his chest protector and hits him right there in the forehead of the mask, pops straight up in the air. Even uh, with the slow moving Gonzalez down there at first base, Tuffy just had to wait, wait, wait for that ball to come back down. And Gonzalez able to get into scoring position with two outs. You better be careful. You call him slow, he'll challenge you to a foot race. I'll concede. You win. <laughs> that happened a couple of weeks ago in San Diego. I pull hamstrings just thinking about running. So Gonzalez at second now, one and two on Guerrero. First Dodger to get to second base today. There's a called strike three. Anderson rings him up, his fifth strikeout. And strands the two-out single. We go two to fifth, no score in L.A.
Grab a Pepsi and some friends and get out to a D-backs game and live it. It's for the thrill of the game. Pepsi, live for now. Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Be sun smart. Another sunny day here in L.A. Diamondbacks and Dodgers. Steve Berthium, Bob Brentley, Todd Walsh along the way. No score here as we start the fifth inning. Yasmani Tomas, Chris Owings, and Tuffy Gozerwish, 5, 6, and 7 against L.A. lefty Brent Anderson. Dejon Watson, who was here on the trip, and scouted it and signed Yasmani Tomas. Said this week that Tomas has always been a guy who's hit the ball to the right side. We've watched Tomas all year long go to right and right center. And Dejon says that approach has been relatively consistent. He's hit the ball to the right side a lot. But Dejon said the power is what he saw that really jumped out at him when they went down to look at Tomas, especially in the workouts. He was driving the baseball over the fence to the right side, but also to the pole side. And we saw that yesterday. Dijon says Tomas' approach has always been middle to right center field, but he banged one off the left field wall here last night. Another one to dead center. Well, we've seen more and more of that as uh, the season has progressed, kind of picking his spots, especially those off-speed pitches, driving them hard to left field. But his natural approach is always going to be to hit the ball to the right side of the field, especially fastballs. Tomas says last few weeks in the cage, he's been watching video, working on letting that ball travel, get a little deeper. Lifts that in the air to left center field, but an easy play for Peterson. A rare fly ball out of the ball game, one away in the field. Number 16. Tomas 0 for 2, here's Chris Owings. Hey fans, when the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. The day after every Diamondbacks victory, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACKS50 at PapaJohns.com. CEO once again, you saw the footwork swinging out of his shoes at the first pitch. It's 0-1. The first pitch curveball, it was down in the zone. I just find it hard to believe that you left that on deck circle looking for a first pitch curveball down. Quickly, he's down 0 and 2. And again, he's always been like this. Even when he was the Coast League MVP, he hit 330 in Reno a couple of years ago, but walked less than 4% of the time. He's up there hacking. Dejon Watson on the trip, as we mentioned. Tony the Russo, the chief baseball officer here as well. Dejon, the former Dodger executive. Get an interview with Todd Walsh on the Diamondback Live pregame show about that. And a lot of those interviews we run on the show, as you can see at FoxSportsArizona.com. Get some good background on Dijon Watson. One of the bright young talent evaluators in this game. Owens battling up there. Anderson now at 60 pitches, 40 for strikes. Well, if nothing else, it looked like CO's shoulder is healthy. He's up there taking full swings. Nothing tentative about his approach. He did not go. Jeff Kellogg down there at first. It's two and two. Chris, of course, injured that left shoulder in late June last year, sliding headfirst into home plate in the game against the Giants. Came up with a labrum tear, had shoulder surgery back in October, performed by Dr. Andrews in Pensacola. But Sio has worked it full now. It's 3-2. and two. Looks at strike three. Second strikeout for Brett Anderson, two down. Late movement on that breaking ball. Right in the middle of the plate, a little bit up. Drops it in the back door. Two down for Tuffy. Rosewish grounded out his first time, 0 for 1. Cushion 
back there for A.J. Ellis. Well, knee savers. Takes some of the pressure off of the knee joint as you're sitting back there. So if he goes away, drops it into right field, a two-out single. That's a fairly recent development of catchers. Yeah, and, and some guys, uh, they find it very comfortable. Uh, like I said, if you're going to sit back there for three hours in a squat position, anything you can do to take some of the pressure off of that knee joint uh, is a welcome addition. Other guys just don't feel comfortable wearing them. And A.J. Ellis has had a couple of knee operations. He's getting up there into his mid-30s. Turned 34 last month, so he needs all the help he can get. Oh, that extra couple of inches there if your rear end goes all the way down to your heels that puts your knees in hyperflexion that happens to me standing up <laughs> well, there just tucked in there we'll look into the dugout for AJ Ellis Nick Ahmed grounded out his first time Tuffy that's scuffling a little bit he asks for the baseball here like it's a souvenir. He was in a two for 23 at the plate before that base hit. Jay Ellis wants to have a conversation. Anderson's behind 2 0. The best improvised device I ever saw for a catcher. You remember Gene Garber, the relief pitcher, Atlanta yeah, the Braves? Braves? Yeah, sure. with the beard. Well, he grew up on a dairy farm. And he took one of his father's cow milking stools and put a rocker on the bottom of it so he could sit on that stool and lean to the right, lean to the left in the game. No, no, not during the game. Right. Just bullpen <laughs> side sessions, what have you. And uh, he brought it to the ballpark, and the Braves catchers used to use that when they were warming up pitchers in the bullpen. Ingenious. Just to save wear and tear. Yeah. There goes Gozawish. The throw from A.J. Ellis is in time. And he throw out Tuffy trying to steal. And that'll end the inning. Bottom five coming up. No score here in L.A. So while Tuffy gets the gear on in between innings, that's Oscar Hernandez out there catching Chase Anderson. Well, they wanted Oscar to be around the ball club and uh, kind of absorb things, figure out how it all comes together, the advance report, and then divulging that information to the pitchers and catchers so you have a good idea of the game plan against the team. And yeah, We know from spring training, Oscar is quite the student of the game, absorbing everything. Coming off that hemi bone surgery here on the trip. Well, Chase Anderson has been outstanding so far. 
He's thrown 64 pitches through four innings. He's given up just one hit, a two-out single by Gonzalez in the fourth. He has walked one, hit a batter with five strikeouts. He'll work to Andre Ethier, Juan Uribe, and A.J. Ellis here in the L.A. fifth. 64 pitches for Chase, 42 for strikes. He's been very effective, and there's another strike one. Well, that's been a good pitch for him today. That first pitch, curveball, just drop it in there, get ahead in the count. Now how long can you get away with that before they start thinking about it or looking for it? Well, that's uh, where it's on Tuffy to remember how you start each hitter in this Dodger lineup. If you rolled a curveball up there to steal a strike in the first at bat of the game, it's probably not a good idea to try to do it in the second at bat. Well, Ethier looked at a strike, then backed out of the box and took his time. 0 oh 2. Supposed to be able to do that this year. But Ethier, the former ASU Sun Devil, of course, always a tough out for the D backs in this ballpark. Ethier hitting 351 for his career against the Diamondbacks in Dodger Stadium, including 13 hundreds. Anderson was ahead 0 2. It's 1 and 2 now. How about this? The last eight batters for Chase Anderson. He's been 0 and 2 on five of them. And that's exactly what he told us at the top of the show he would try to do today. Get out and attack and get ahead in the count early. That's in the seats and out of play. And the key for Chase is always that fastball command, putting the fastball where he wants it, in and around the strike zone. Very few extra pitches. Now that's something that has plagued Diamondback starters, having to use extra pitches to get out of innings because they're not locating that fastball. And that's something Mike Harkey says is one of the biggest things that he harps on all the time. Throw that fastball for strikes and then go from there. And that's what Chase has done here today. 2-2 two two now. Ball to center field, a late break for A.J. Pollock. Nick Ahmed finds his way out there and runs it down. A.J. could not find that initially. He froze and then started sprinting in from deep center field. But Ahmed wanders out there for our Chaz Roberts air conditioning. Who will play the game? Yeah, A.J. broke back initially, couldn't recover quickly enough. But fortunately, Nick Ahmed had a real good read on that ball off the bat. His job is to go for it until somebody calls you off. And that time, Nick made the play. Nice play by the D-back shortstop. That's the first out here in the fifth. Juan Uribe now. Chase Anderson has now retired the leadoff man in all five innings. There's a strike, one and one. Two balls in a strike. Uribe with that 11 game hitting streak on the line here today. His first action in the series. And belts it into left, the base hit. So 12 in a row for Uribe. Second Dodger hit today against Chase Anderson. Juan Uribe has been pretty good for a long time. I mean, he just doesn't get cheated. He gets into fastball situations. He starts that bat a little bit early to make sure he catches a pitch out in front of home plate and finds that one into left field to continue his hitting streak. Well, Chase Anderson has been getting ground ball outs all afternoon here. See if he can roll a double play ball with the catcher A.J. Ellis at the plate and Uribe at first. 
Ellis just three hits and 21 at bats to start the year. And there's a strike. misses there it's even AJ Ellis's offensive game has almost vanished he's a very good handler of pitchers Clayton Kershaw's personal catcher but the bat has really drifted away he hit 175 after the all-star break last year and it's three for 21 this year Well, he joked about it last year. He realized uh, in his minor league career that his best chance of getting on base was getting walked. So he became a much more patient hitter, took a lot of pitches. But then the adjustment was made by National League pitchers. They realized that and started to go right after A.J. Ellis. And when he's been forced to swing the bat, the numbers just haven't been there. And he was an 18th round draft pick out of Austin P back in 2003. He's been with the Dodgers organization his entire pro career. He quickly developed a reputation as one of the more disciplined hitters in baseball. A terrific eye for the strike zone. And he's ahead here 3-1. 80 pitches for Chase, 51 for strikes. There's a strike, it's full 3-2. 3-1 changeup from Chase Anderson. Very favorable hitter's count, usually a fastball count. You can see Ellis got started a little bit early. The front side opened up. He ended up taking the pitch for a called strike. Uribe takes off from first. That's fouled and in the seats. third at Lorenzo Bundy. Rebe goes again. This is in the air to right center. Trumbo has it. And Rebe will get back to the bag. That's the second out. At what point, Bob, in a ball game like this, where both guys are clearly on top of their game out on the mound, do you start thinking about playing for one run? Or do you do that already? Uh, in, in Dodger Stadium in a day game, I, I don't think uh, you should pull the trigger on that too early because uh, we've seen the ball carry really well at night here. I would expect it's really going to jump if anybody gets into one today. But uh, it really depends on the confidence you have in your own starter. Is he going to be able to stifle the Dodgers? Then maybe you feel like you do play for one run. Brett Anderson. Struck out in his first well, Jim Leland, in his days as a manager for the Pittsburgh Pirates, used to bunt with Jay Bell in the first inning. Skies at third base side. Tomas looking up into that zone. Looking back toward the mound, and he's got it. And that's the inning. Chase Anderson is through five. He's given up just two hits, no score in LA.
come and really give the, the players a hard time. And we, as high school players, would come in and give these you know major leaguers a tough time about how, how easy the game is to play. And we had a blast here. You were one of those guys. I had to be one of those guys. I couldn't help myself. Who did you ride most? You know, it was Luis Salazar with the San Diego Padres. I'll never forget. You never do forget those. Right? And no, and he had two home runs a day. I was giving him a hard time. So, yeah, I definitely remember that. Steve and Bob, I had to drop that in on you. I, I just appreciated Dijon and operating under full disclosure. We fully intended to and did talk about his life and times here in Los Angeles and what he thinks of his Diamondbacks team. But that story just struck a chord. I, I'm imagining many people I know that would go and heckle players. As he did say later on in the interview, at one point within the Dod Dodger organization, guess who was on the minor league coaching staff? You got it. Salazar. And then later he had to let him go. Ouch. <laughs> And I guess a lesson learned, I, I think, maybe. Well, the Dodgers have always been at the forefront of international scouting in the major leagues for years and years. And Dijon, while he was here, was a, a big part of that. And now with the Diamondbacks. Nick Ahmed leads off the Arizona sixth against Brett Anderson. Four hits for the D-backs, two for the Dodgers. No score here. A pitcher's duel between Chase and Brett Anderson. No relation. Ahmed grounded out his first time. And Dijon is one of the great talkers in the game as well. He's a tremendous interview, very personable guy, always fun to talk baseball with. Ragging on guys in the visiting dugout. I probably got heckled by Dijon. <laughs> it's come full circle. I was a contemporary of uh, Luis Salazar. Nick Ahmed bangs it into left, a base hit, leadoff man aboard for the Diamondbacks. Now Chase Anderson will have a chance to bunt him over for the Chase top of the order. Anderson. Let's take a look at this day in Major League Baseball history brought to you by Geico. Talk about pitchers that can hit. Well, one staff that could not hit last season. The Mets set the record for longest hitless streak by a pitching staff going a collective 0 for 46 since opening day. They would stretch it out to an 0 for 64 before a Mets pitcher finally got his first hit. Here's a Diamondbacks pitcher trying to drop down a bunt, and it's strike one on Chase Anderson as the corners crash for the Dodgers. Where these two guys are going, one run looms awfully large here as we start the sixth. Chase is down 0 and 2. I think they're going to keep the bun on right here. Chase uh, doesn't swing the bat that well. Probably have a better chance of doing something productive. Keep bunting even with two strikes. Uribe well in on the grass at third. He charges, and Anderson strikes out. Well, they can't move the runner along, and Ahmed stays at first. Here's Ender Inciarte, who singled his last time up. He's one for two. Ender had a pair of hits last night. He scored a run, drove in a run. Well, we've still only seen one team shift on Ender Inciarte. That was the Pirates last weekend. Ender admit when he got up there and saw it, he got a little freaked out. He said, I've never seen this. What do I do? And it didn't seem to make much sense with how well he goes the other way, but uh, the Pirates played him that way. I think they only did the one time. And they got a base hit in the left field. That'll pull you out of a shift. <laughs> he said it first time it ever happened to him, and it did get in his head a little bit. But then he said he told himself, just do what you always do. Just try to go the other way. Try to go to the middle. He thought the shift was actually giving him an advantage. And he's probably right. A ball and two strikes. As you can see, this yeah. is part of his game. Maybe they had the defensive chart upside down in the Pirates' dugout. <laughs> Like unfolding one of those big maps. Yeah. Where the hell are we? Where are we? 
There goes the runner. Ahmed takes off, and Enciarte slaps it down the left field line, and it just goes foul. That's likely a run if it's fair. Ahmed was off with a pitch. And really got a good jump, and Ender just missed one. Just the side English on that ball coming off the bat of a left-hander down that left field line. Oh, so close. Come on, man. That almost certainly would have been a run the way Nick Ahmed was streaking around those bases. Ahmed on first after his leadoff single. One out, one and two on NCR 10. Rolls it to the other side. Gonzalez tackles it and beats Enciarte to the bag. Ahmed moves up two outs. Number 11, A.J. Pollock. Step and a dive for Adrian Gonzalez. The only play he had was to try to beat Ender Enciarte back to the bag at first, and he just does that. Took a quick peek at second base. Runner was probably right in his line of fire, so he chose to go to the bag, take the sure out. Just got mm -hmm. Ender by a step, so. On that at second, two down for A.J. Pollock. A.J. 0 for 2. Ball one. Diamondbacks have five hits, two for the Dodgers, but... This is the first time the D-backs have had a runner at second base all ball game. Anderson at 80 pitches, 53 for strikes. One or one. AJ being a little more deliberate in this at bat, runner in scoring position. You don't know how many more opportunities you're going to get in this ball game. He just wants to make sure his mind is right, knows what he wants to hit. Get a good pitch, put a good swing on it. He's ahead, three balls and one strike. Goldie on deck. that time Ellis out on the outside corner that ball strays back over the middle of the plate and up but apparently not what AJ was looking for in the 3-1 count wind blowing out you see those big flags out to dead center field right now he lifts it along the right field line it's got a chance to stay fair but it slices foul Backs flirting with that big hit in this inning. Spraying the foul lines. Swings and misses. A.J. Ellis will complete the strikeout. And Anderson strands the leadoff single. Bottom six on the way. No score at Dodger Stadium.
Field next Saturday, May 9th. You can get the Josh Colmenter bobblehead, courtesy of Arizona Sports, 98.7 FM. Sunday, May 10th, 10,000 moms get this sauce-style ladies' T-shirt, courtesy of Fry's Food Stores. And then on May 24th, you can pick up the D-backs fedora cap, courtesy of Gila River Casinos. Get your tickets right now online at dbacks.com. Jock Peterson leads off the LA 6. He is 0 for 2. He has struck out twice, and he has been up there hacking away all afternoon. Struck out in his first three at bats here last night before a homer that tied it in the seventh. A free swinger. Brett Anderson so far. 86 pitches through six innings. He's given up just five hits all singles. Coming at you, BB. And Chase Anderson is floating with 90 pitches right now as he works in the home half of the sixth. This has been the best he's looked all year. Now, without a doubt, commanding everything in this game. Two and two. Well, obviously, we haven't seen a lot of Jock Peterson, but what I've seen, especially in this series, I, I think you attack this guy with fastballs. In, 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 fastballs everywhere. He appears to be a real good off-speed hitter. That time took a changeup for a called strike. The grand slam that he hit in the first game of this series is on a changeup out over the plate. He tends to take that big, out-of-control swing at fastballs. So just throwing fastballs where he can't get the barrel on them, and that's usually inside. Jimmy Rollins. Rollins has struck out and tapped back to the mound. He's 0 for 2. Another strike one from Chase Anderson. Much more efficient today for Chase Anderson. The three ball counts and the two strike foul balls have haunted him through his first four starts, but today only three times has a Dodger hitter gone to a three ball count. He has walked one and hit a batter. He's got six strikeouts. Swing there, Rollins was full. That's one and two. And this is without a doubt the best curveball we've seen from Chase Anderson. Really showing a lot of confidence in it today. We talked about stealing that strike one and in a bat, he's able to scoot it down a little bit and get some swings and misses. And then he gets Rollins to Chase for his seventh strikeout. Two strikeouts to open up the sixth for Chase. Number 47, Howie Kendrick. A good tailing action on that changeup. That appeared to be a hittable changeup when it came out of his hand on the outer third of the plate, but it just kept drifting farther and farther away from Jimmy Rollins. He couldn't get to it. Two down for Howie Kendrick. Kendrick was hit by a pitch in the first, grounded out his last time. Belts it to Trumbo and right. And a nice quick one, two, three, sixth inning for Chase Anderson. Here's what's next, brought to you by CenturyLink, the heart of the order. Goldie leads off for Diamondback seven.
the two Andersons, the two starting pitchers, Chase and Brett, both have been outstanding here so far. An, an early hook for Brett Anderson, who comes out of the game as Pedro Baez is on for L.A. Brett Anderson has given up only five hits, all singles, but he's thrown 86 pitches. His last three starts, Brett Anderson. His pitch count has been in the low 70s, 73 pitches, 72 pitches, 74 his last time out. So he's out after 86 through 6, and Baez is on for the Dodgers. Saw Baez first game of this series, pitched an inning in two-thirds in relief of Carlos Freya, struck out a couple of batters, otherwise zeros across the board. Another one of those big arms out of the Dodger bullpen, average fastball right at 96 miles per hour, also throws a slider and a changeup. So Don Mattingly pulls the plug on the lefty Brett Anderson. Goldschmidt, Trumbo, Tomas, 3, 4, and 5 in the Arizona 7th. D-backs about hit the Dodgers 5-2, to two, still no score here. Goldie singled his last time up. He's one for two. And he has been swinging at the first pitch nearly 10% more often than he did earlier in his career, so keep that in mind here. And he belts the first pitch down the left field line, and that ball is drifting into the seats and out of play. Jumped on the first one one more time. He's got four homers on the first pitch this year, which is as many as he's had the last two years combined. So quick. But he hooks it foul for a loud strike one. an hour is fouled off and it's 0-2. Now this one up a little bit, yeah, up a lot, up shoulder high. Goalie fouls it straight back in our direction. That one went right to Vin. Seven a ball in the two strings. As good as Brett Anderson was today, I think Don Mattingly just didn't want to risk running a left-handed arm through the middle of this Diamondbacks order and all the right-handed hitters that Chip Hale has stacked up today. Only Inciarte in the leadoff spot, uh, the only lefty in the lineup today. Well, this would have been the third time through the order for Anderson. He's got this right-hander Baez who can come in and throw 98, so why not? Two pitch. Got him. I mentioned Baez does have a slider and a changeup, but you're not going to see a lot of those pitches. He's just going to rear back and try to throw it as hard as he can somewhere in the direction of home plate, and that time got Goldie with a 97 mile an hour heater. Mark Trumbo singled in the second. He's one for two. One hit in the series so far. He's at 296 on the year. is game 24 this season for the Diamondbacks. You'll recall last year, Mark had seven homers in his first 21 games. Oliver Perez has started throwing for the Diamondbacks. But then on April 21st, went down with that stress fracture in his left foot and missed three months. Been a much more complete hitter this time around. Moving really well out there. Two homers, 11 RBIs. And the average right at 300. 
This is a 97. It's two and one. And Chip Hale said this spring that people talk all about the Diamondbacks' potential offensive stars, and sometimes Mark Trumbo gets overlooked. And Chip has felt that Mark was a little undersold here a bit, and that might be good for the Diamondbacks. And Trumbo has certainly had a good start to the year. Too many of these guys around. That's what Chip Hale was pointing out. Look, this is a power guy. He drives guys in. They're, guys like that are really, really hard to come by these days. And you can see Mark featured it. Part of our best a cup of coffee coming up right after the ball game here on Fox Sports Arizona. The first episode of 2015 comes up in just a couple of weeks. Tony La Russa. 2-2 pitch. Ellis hangs on. Second strikeout for Baez. Baez does show one of his secondary pitches here to strike out Trumbo. Hard slider. Not a lot of movement, but when you throw 97 with your fastball, you don't need a whole heck of a lot of movement on your breaking pitches. Yasmani Tomas 0 for 2. He has hit into a double play and fly it out. So and one. Dejon Watson put this in an interesting way, talking about Yasmani Tomas and how the power is starting to show up a little bit as Tomas gets more comfortable at this level. And Dejon said that Tomas is hunting the pitches that he wants and putting good swings on them. He's up there hunting for pitches. 0 oh 2. I take that to mean he goes up there with an idea of what he's looking for. About nine pitches already, north of 95. Nine of 12 that Baez has delivered. He's a strike away from getting the side in order, three, four, and five. Just does get a piece. Still throwing in the Diamondback bullpen. That lefties Gonzalez and Ethier do up in the bottom of the seventh. They get to this point in a nothing nothing ball game. It usually comes down to a mistake, either a physical mistake or a pitcher hangs a breaking ball. Both starters were outstanding today. Defense has been really good for both teams. Both D-backs lefties pitched here last night. Andrew Chafin threw 11 pitches. Only Perez threw only four. Came in and got Gonzalez to strike out to win the seventh. One and two on Tomas. Pedro Baez comes in and strikes out the side. One, two, three. He gets Goldie, Trumbo, and Tomas. Three, four, five. And we stretch at Dodger Stadium. It's the D backs and the Dodgers. Still no score.
is brought to you by Sanderson Ford. We are out on the coast. And a good one in the series finale. No score, the D-backs and the Dodgers. Hey, fans, MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. You can watch every out-of-market game live or on demand in True HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. You'll get real-time highlights, live look-ins, the old pitch tracking widgets, and a whole lot more. Blackout rules do apply, so visit MLB.TV for details. Well, Chase Anderson was brilliant here for the Diamondbacks. Six innings of shutout ball. He gave up only two hits. He walked one and struck out seven. But with a couple of very good left-hand bats coming up here in the LA 7th, it's the left-hander Oliver Perez. Now Chase Anderson, one short of a career high in strikeouts. He's punched out eight opponents four different times, finished the day with seven. Five on change-ups, two on fastballs. Gonzalez, Guerrero, Ethier, four, five, and six in the Dodgers' seventh. Gonzalez has one of their two hits, a single his last time up. Gonzalez bunts away from the shift. Gozowish is on it and throws him out. A nice play there by Tuffy Gozowish with Gonzalez bunting for a base hit. Number seven. Pretty good punt right there. Only the athleticism of Tuffy coming out of the shoot quickly. Turns his back to first base. Wheels around and fires just in time. Well, in plenty of time to get Adrian Gonzalez to first. Careful, he'll race you. Mike Harkey out to the mound. Diamondbacks bullpen is busy. The right-hander Randall Delgado is throwing down there. Dodgers fans, let's go! And here's Alex Guerrero, who struck out looking his last time up. He's over two. And through seven innings so far, Diamondback pitchers have kept the Dodger leadoff man off base all day long. Guerrero, be careful here. He's got five homers at 387 on the year. sense now that everybody is going up there trying to win the game. Yeah, it's human nature. You get deep into a ball game, no score, not much offense at all in the game. Everybody wants to be the hero and take that one big swing. A ball and a strike. Alex Guerrero, a three-time All-Star shortstop in Cuba's top league, a career 308 hitter there. Just over 100 homers in eight seasons. Signed with the Dodgers before last year. One and two. D-backs are on a plane right after this ball game. We are off to Denver for three against the Rockies. We'll have the games Monday and Tuesday for you here on Fox Sports Arizona. Dodgers fly out as well. They have four in Milwaukee. It's Miller Park starting at home. That's in the seats. A look at our Chevron upcoming pitching matchup. The Diamondbacks and the Rockies, Josh Colmenter. And we'll get another look at Tyler Matzik. And then Robbie Ray makes his D-backs debut on Tuesday, taking Archie Bradley's rotation spot. One and two on Alex Guerrero. Just misses. It's two and two. It's like somebody hit the pause button on Oliver Perez's delivery right there. Uh. He's just messing around. He's just inventing things out there. 
It's like one of the deliveries you see from some of the Japanese pitchers where they have that long pause at the top. Blows it right by him. Two down. Number 16, Andre. Yeah, it's all part of what makes Oliver Perez effective. He gives you different leg kicks, slide step, turns his back to home plate from time to time. No two deliveries look exactly alike. Something you certainly wouldn't teach a young pitcher. You know, you want to repeat your mechanics and be consistent with your mechanics, but... Uh, this stage of his career, Oliver Perez uh, feels he's more effective using a variety of deliveries. Yeah, young guy would go out there and tell him to knock it off. And quit goofing around. Ethier has walked and popped up over one. That one in there for a strike. Pace it. Made a right between Paul Goldschmidt and Chris Owings. And Ethier has a two out single. Just found a seam on that right side. Yeah. Ethier just intercepted that ball before it got to the spot. Goldie with a dive, CO with a dive. Neither one could get to it. There's Juan Uribe. Ethier at first, two down. Uribe singled his last time up. That extended his hit streak to 12 games. Randall Delgado has been warming up, and Chip Hale is going to go get him. You've got the right hand hitting Uribe coming up. The righty is ready in the Diamondback bullpen. And Chip Hale will make the move here with two outs in the seventh. Pitching change at Dodger Stadium back after this. is brought to you in part by your Valley Honda dealers, where you'll get more standard features for less money. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Mix One, great taste, no face, available at local retailers. In Los Angeles, an interesting call here by Chip Hale. You've wondered this, Bob, about Randall Delgado. You know, one of the benefits of having Randall back there in the Diamondback bullpen is he can give you length. We've talked about that this year. But with Evan Marshall faltering a bit here, you wonder if maybe Randall Delgado can step up and get you that one or two big outs late in the ball game. Be more of a specialty reliever rather than something of a long man. Well, as long as Randall's throwing strikes, uh, he can be effective in any role out of that bullpen. Eighth year, the runner at first, two outs. Here's Uribe, who looks at strike one. 
Uribe a single his last time up now with a 12 game hitting streak. He's at 286 on the year. Delgado quickly out ahead 0 2. Diamondback pitchers have been strike throwers throughout this ball game. Oh, that's an unhittable strike right there. Bottom of the knees, edge of the black on the outside corner. Ooh, almost threw that one to the backstop at 96. is away it's two and two diamond backs in the eighth inning will have Chris Owens Tuffy goes to wish and Nick Ahmed scheduled six seven and eight but first Elgato trying to get them out of the LA seventh two outs two balls two strikes Ethy or the runner at first It's full three and two. And that means Heath here can take off with the pitch. A.J. Ellis, the catcher, is on deck. Goldie will still hold the runner at first. Talk this one over. Tuffy's got an idea in his mind of what the proper pitch is in this situation. Randall Delgado maybe had a little bit of a different idea, so rather than just guess, go out there and talk it over. What do you think? The dangerous one, Uribe. Three balls, two strikes. Here it is. There goes the runner, and Uribe strikes out. Delgado comes in and gets a big strikeout to send us to the eighth. The Dodgers and Diamondbacks in this series finale still scoreless. Eighth inning on the way. Anderson, one of his best starts as a Diamondback here this afternoon. Six innings of two hit ball. He walked only one. He struck out seven. And Chase had it rolling here tonight, baby. Boy, had everything working. Had a good curveball. The changeup was there, as it is almost every start for Chase Anderson. And his fastball command was impeccable. Just didn't make any mistakes where the Dodgers could get real good swings on it. And so we're in the eighth inning now in a scoreless ball game. New pitcher for the Dodgers. 
is the left-hander Adam Libertor. He was acquired by the Dodgers from Tampa Bay back in November and so far this year. Look at these numbers. He's retired 18 of the 19 he's faced, allowed only one hit, no walks. Fastball slider changeup combination. Usually fastball slider to the lefties, fastball changeup to the righties. Chris Owings leads off the Arizona eighth. Owens has flied out and struck out looking over to. Need a runner. Find a way on there. Shortstop and right to Rollins. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with AYSO, the world's largest soccer club. Fans, you can go to AYSO.org slash play to find your region and sign up for your fall team today. Fox Sports Supports. So if he goes a wish, single his last time up. Huh? He's got one of the Five diamond back hits. Out of play. Duffy at 179 on the year, three for his last 24 up there. Nick Ahmed is on deck. Ooh. And they're at 95. It's 0 2. Away, two balls and two strikes. Brad Ziegler. Brad worked one inning last night through 15 pitches, gave up a run on three hits, also had a walk. Backs up Uribe at third. Backs up Gonzalez at first. Got him. Number 13. I mentioned Nick it earlier. Rebay still has the solid glove down there at third. Just doesn't have much arm anymore. That's a tough hop for Adrian Gonzalez. He backs into foul territory to play the big hop. Not an artistic success. Ahmed singled his last time up. He's one for two. Five hits for the Diamondbacks, three for the Dodgers. All the hits in the ball game for both teams are singles. Pitcher spot is due up next for the D-backs, and Aaron Hill is in the on-deck circle. Aaron had a home run here last night to lead off the fourth, his first of the year. There he is. A strike at 95, one and two. At 
the knees. Self defense. Dodger lefty has kind of an unusual delivery, real short arm stroke, hardly any follow through at all, but still gets it up there in the mid 90s. Adderley brought in the lefty Libertor to face three right hand hitters. Got the first two. He's ahead of Ahmed, a ball and two strikes. Two and two. That's a split finger fastball that he uses for a changeup. Strikes out. Libertor works a one, two, three, eight. Still scoreless. who struck out Juan Uribe to win the LA seventh is back out there for the Diamondbacks. Eight, nine, and one due up for the Dodgers. A.J. Ellis will lead it off. The pitcher spot is behind him, and Justin Turner is in the on-deck circle with Emi Garcia warming up in the Dodger bullpen. Andrew Chafin throwing for the Diamondbacks. First pitch swing is fouled back here. It's 0-1. Diamondback bullpen. It's always key to get the leadoff hitter in an inning, but especially late in a ball game, knotted at 0 0. Imperative you get this leadoff hitter. Ellis just three for 22 on the year. Oh, and two. There's Garcia warming up in the LA bullpen. last night for the Dodgers. Roller 
to second right to Chris Owings. One away. And we'll see Justin Turner hit for the pitcher. Turner's had a big series so far. He started the first two games at third base. He has homered twice. In fact, he's homered now in three of his last four games. Nothing cheap about that second one. The first one we thought was just a fly ball to center field. A.J. Pollock got fooled by it as well as it carried out of here on Friday night. But last night he got every bit of it. Turner at 300 on the year. He was on base three times and scored three runs last night. A homer, a base on balls, and a double. A home run and a pair of strikeouts in Friday's series opener. by Low Bundy at third. Delgado's ahead of ball in two strikes. Doc Peterson is on deck. Just missed with that one. It's a tough pitch to take for Turner. Tuffy moves out onto that outside corner. Randall hits the glove just off the plate away. Good spot for it. 2 2 pitch. Got him. Big strike out there for Delgado. Number 31. Good change up that time from Delgado. Really good arm action. Got up on top of that ball, drove it down to the bottom of the zone, got the swinging strike. Well, you've got the left hand hitting Jock Peterson coming up for the Dodgers. Andrew Chafe in the left hand thrower warming up in the Diamondback bullpen, and Chappelle will make the move. He'll go to the lefty. Cliff Pennington is coming out, and it looks like he will double switch. Pennington will take over at shortstop for Nick Ahmed. Double switch here. Chafe on the way in to face Peterson back after this.
All pitching and defense so far today in the Cox Gig Life High Speed Highlights. Two outs at the bottom of the eighth inning, and Andrew Chankin, who came into last night's ball game to get two big outs. He struck out Ethier and Grandal to win the sixth, and he's on to try and get Jock Peterson here to win the eighth, his ninth appearance of the year. Cliff Pennington stays in the game. He takes over at shortstop for Nick Ahmed. Pennington will bat ninth pitcher spot now, eighth in the diamond back over. Peterson so far, 0 for 3. He has struck out three times. And in his last nine at bats in this series, he's got a homer and seven strikeouts. First pitch swinging, right to Tomas. The shift is on, Chafin throws one pitch, and that ends the eighth inning. We go to the ninth, still scoreless at Dodger Stadium. This is brought to you by your Valley Toyota dealer. We are going to Denver right after this ball game for a three against the Rockies. First two games for you here on Fox Sports Arizona. Josh Coleman and Tyler Matzik on Monday. Robbie Ray makes his Diamondbacks debut, taking Archie Bradley's rotation spot against Jordan Lyles Tuesday night. Wednesday afternoon game, no TV there. Ruby De La Rosa and Eddie Butler. New pitcher for the Dodgers here as we start the night. We saw Last night in the ball game, when he threw 22 pitches, worked an inning, had a walk and a strikeout. The right-hander, Eddie Garcia, .71 ERA. When his batting average, not even 100, .093. Big-time strikeout pitcher, 20 punch outs in his 12 and two-thirds, only four base on balls. One of those uh, came in the ball game last night. With Pennington, who was double switched into the game at shortstop, taking over for Nick Ahmed, leads it off for the Diamondbacks. He's batting ninth. Pitcher spot is now eighth. So Pennington, Enciarte, and Pollock nine, one and two in the Arizona ninth. Ball one. Look, Pennington four for 19 to open the year. He started yesterday's game here at shortstop, went one for four. Nice catch by a fan here in the second deck. Just over 48,000 on hand this afternoon. Same spot. One and two. Both fastballs. First one in 93. That one in 94. And both fouled in nearly the same spot. Garcia, the fourth pitcher of the afternoon for the Dodgers. Diamondbacks have used four as well. Chase Anderson and Brett Anderson, both outstanding. 
but now it's a bullpen game, 0-0 in the ninth. This is upstairs, it's even 2-2. Two and two. Offense in the first two games of this series. Today, not so much. Day game after a night game. Neither team took batting practice on the field today. It's not unusual to see a sluggish offensive game on a day like this. It's been a series so far dominated by the long ball. A lot of home runs, but just eight hits of the ball game for both teams. All of them singles. Sender and Ciarte. Rebe comes a couple of steps in on the grass at third. Ender has one of those base hits, a single in the fourth. He's one for three. Lifts it in the air to left field. Guerrero is under it. And he makes the play for two outs. Brings up A.J. Pollock. Dodgers in the bottom Number of the ninth will have Rollins, Kendrick, and Gonzalez, two, three, and four. Diamondback bullpen will get busy again right here. Dodger bullpen quiet right now. A.J. 0 for three, struck out his last time up. and Reed. Well, after the offense we saw in the first two games, we just documented that. I thought today was going to be one of those 12 to 10 games. The way the ball was flying out of here for the two night games, I assumed it was really going to turn into a band box for the day game. A pop up behind the plate. Ellis gives it a look, tosses the mask aside, and it's a one, two, three, ninth for Garcia. So Rollins, Kendrick, and Gonzalez, two, three, and four coming up for the Dodgers. It's bottom nine in LA. Local sports coverage you won't find anywhere else. You get Jack's post game analysis from here at Dodger Stadium. Reaction from the Diamondback Clubhouse as well. And a recap of Danny Dorn's big weekend here in LA. Fox Sports Arizona.com. Bottom nine. Dodger Stadium. Diamondbacks and Dodgers are scoreless. Andrew Chapin back out there for the D backs. 
He'll work to Jimmy Rollins, Howie Kendrick, and Adrian Gonzalez, 2, 3, and 4 in the LA night. Rollins is over 3. He has struck out twice. The switch hitter bats from the right-hand side. There's his strike going away. Rollins really slumping right now. Five hits in his last 41 at bats. And the average well below 200. There's his strike going two. Rollins, the switch hitter, better from the left-hand side in terms of production. That's where he had 14 of his 17 homers last year. Before his career, he's actually just a smidge better as a hitter from the right-hand side. It's a piece and stays alive. The batting average nearly identical for Jimmy Rollins, right against left. I think most people in baseball, however, would turn him around to the right side if given their choice. Yes, he went. Jeff Kellogg, the crew chief, rings him up. And Chafin strikes out Rollins to open up the ninth. Number 47, Tuffy Kendrick. Breaking ball down low in the dirt. Rollins thought he checked. Tuffy applies the tag and then asks for help from the first base umpire. Well, the Dodgers with their lineup today, Jock Peterson batting leadoff and Jimmy Rollins in the two-hole. Those two guys today a combined 0 for 8 with six strikeouts. And here's Howie Kendrick, who's been hit by a pitch. He's 0 for 2. Chafin throwing strikes. Good strikes, too. He's not just throwing it down the middle of the plate, working the corners. Throwing that slider across the knees and lower. Both bullpens are busy. One. Sergio Santos for the Dodgers. This is away. Two balls and one strike. Kendrick has it safely in 17 of 23 games this year. Sitting 377 at home this year. 2 1 pitch. Right over in the head of Davey Lopes down there at first. It's 2 and 2. Enrique Burgos now warming for the Diamondbacks. As Reed had been throwing out there. Two balls, two strikes. Just missed, and it's full, three and two. Gonzalez is next. Over the head of Chris Owings and into right center. It rolls to the wall. Trumbo picks it up off the wall. Has trouble picking the ball up, and Kendrick will head for third. And they got him at third. Yasmani Tomas hangs on. Guarding that bag like a linebacker on the goal line. And Kendrick is held for no gain. It's a double and a put out at third. Look at Tomas. Oh, take the bag right away. Nowhere for Kendrick to go on that slide. A bad decision on his part to begin with, but a perfect cutoff and relay on the Osmani Tomas, who does his best Mike Sosha impersonation over there at third. Blocks the bag, applies the tag. 9 4 5 on the put out. Ryan DePanfilo is going to come out and have a look at Tomas as he moves over to the second base spot. And Chip Hale will join him. Kendra came in hard that time. And Ariel Prieto, the translator, and coach for the Diamondbacks is out there as well. One more look. Drops that right knee. Takes the full brunt of Howie Kendrick on that right thigh. 
Able to hang on to the ball for the out at third base. Needless to say, that is just huge. Gabe Morales right there to make the call, the third base umpire. And it appears that Tomas is okay. Training staff comes off the field. He moves over to his second base spot with a shift on for Gonzalez. Combo really had some problems picking the ball up out there on the warning track, and Kendrick saw that and took off for third. I was just going to say catchers are not allowed to block home plate anymore, but uh, apparently third basemen are allowed to block third. I was going to say that. No clear path to the bag there, that's for sure. Gonzalez single in the fourth. He's one for three. there for a strike one and one Adrian Gonzalez 31 home runs 102 RBIs against the Diamondbacks the most among all active players Diamondbacks if they can survive the ninth here we'll have Goldie Trumbo Tomas three four and five at the top of the tenth that one is in there for a strike and Gonzalez still barking at Gabe Morales, or Mark Ripperter, pardon me. Two and two. Pennington all by himself on the left-hand side in the shortstop spot. Tomas just to the first base side of second. As the third baseman and Chris Owings with 10 or 15 feet out there in shallow right. Goldie on the line at first. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, bottom nine. A little roller. Tomas knocks it down. Can he recover? Gonzalez is aboard. Asmani Tomas Friday afternoon here practiced fielding balls from that very spot for about 15, 20 minutes with Andy Green. But that will go as E5. Went into a slide to keep that ball from getting into right field, and that put his glove in a bad position, knocked it away from himself. By the time he recovers, even the slow-footed Adrian Gonzalez is able to leg it out. Mike Harkey out to the mound with Alex Guerrero coming up. Trying to get that final out and take us to extras. Let's go, Mark Ripperger comes out to the mound now to break up this meeting. Kendrick got himself thrown out at third for the second out of the inning. Gonzalez is down there at first. Two down as Guerrero steps in. He has struck out his last two at bats. He's 0 for 3. Winning run at first, two down. This one is right to Owings, the second baseman. Andrew Chafin does a terrific job in relief for the Diamondbacks, and we will play extra innings in the series finale. We go to the 10th, still no score at Dodger Stadium.
Jack links beef jerky. Feed your wild side. Feed it. We're in the 10th in Los Angeles. Diamondbacks and Dodgers no score. Some changes for LA. Sergio Santos, who pitched in the series opener here Friday, is on for the fourth time this year. Pitcher spot is now fifth in the LA order. Scott Van Slyke takes over for Alex Guerrero and left at bats ninth. So Santos is out there, Van Slyke in left, Goldschmidt, Trumbo, and Tomas in the Arizona 10th, 3, 4, and 5. As you said, we saw Santos in the first game of this series, pitched a clean eighth inning, one, two, three, no damage done. That was an eight nothing Dodgers victory. A little different story here today though. No margin for error. Strike one to Goldie, who singled back in the fourth. Gets it in the air to center field. Peterson won't be able to run it down, and it gets to the wall. And Paul Goldschmidt is in there with his sixth double leadoff man in scoring position here in the 10th for the Diamondbacks. Goldie two for four. And that's the first extra base hit for the D-backs here today. Dodgers are fortunate Goldie didn't get a little more elevation on this ball. Struck well to the gap in left center field, just not high enough to carry very much. The flags are pushing out that direction too, uh, almost going straight out to center field, occasionally from right to left. Winds have turned around since the beginning of the game. Blowing the other way early. Now going from right field out to left. Here's Trumbo. One for three, a single in the second. Big run standing out there at second base with nobody out. 95, 0 and 1. I think this is just, yeah, the second time in the entire ball game that Diamondbacks have had a runner at second base. Six misses away. It's a ball and a strike. Tomas on deck. <laughs> Big cut there for Mark for the off speed pitch. It's one and two. Speed in the mid to upper 80s with that hard slider from Santos. That one with a lot of downward movement. Talked about it in the game last night. This is where you'd love to see a productive out at least. Find a way to get Goldie over there to third base with only one out in the inning. Obviously, you'd like to drive him in. But at worst, right side, yeah, yeah, get him over. One and two. Tied up inside. Mark kept those hands in there, and he looks at ball two. Now this slider doesn't take the break for Sergio Santos. Kind of floated up and in. AJ Ellison set up on the outside corner. Had to reach back across the plate, and this time they do not get the call from Mark Ripperger. Reaches down and pulls it down the left field line, but it's in the seats. I don't think he would try with nobody out in the inning, but if uh, Trumbo happens to make out and Goldie's still at second base, look for him to try to get a jump and steal third. He's ever so gently creeping off the bag out there at second until Howie Kendrick had to come in a couple of steps and chase Goldie back to the bag. I mean, he knows that Jimmy Rollins can't make a play on him from where he is deep in the hole at shortstop. Howie Kendrick, the only guy able to hold him on right now. Big 
cut at the 2-2 pitch, and Trumbo strikes out. A couple of times in this ball game where the Diamondbacks have just not been able to advance a base runner. Slider in the dirt, low and away. So here's Tomas. He has hit into a double play, flied out, and struck out 0 for 3. Well, with Tomas at the plate, you would expect Howie Kendrick to play a little more straight up position at second base. However, Jimmy Rollins also is going to play up the middle a little bit more, making it tougher for Goldie if indeed he wants to think about stealing third base. Rollins backs off at short. Tomas fouls that one back. It's a one The wind is reverse direction again, blowing out left to right. Swirling winds here in LA. <laughs> oh, and two. Plate fouled off to the right side. How about a wild pitch moving up to third right here. Seen Santos bounce a couple of those sliders in the dirt already. Ellis has done a nice job of keeping him in front. Rollins sneaking it at second base now behind Goldie. And Santos will step off. He's making a lot of noise behind Goldie out there. Usually he's been faking it and then dropping back. That time he went all the way to the bag. 0 oh 2. Well, a leadoff double by Goldie, and now it's going to take a two out hit by Chris Owings. Rumbo strikes out, Tomas strikes out. Almost an identical pitch to the Number one that Mark Trumbo swung Number through. Marks was a little bit lower, but that slider that starts at the bottom of the zone and ends up near the dirt. Walk Owings and work to Tuffy Gozowicz. Tuffy singled in the 50s, one for three. First base open. They'll try and set up the out at any base along the infield. First walk issued by Dodger pitching this afternoon. An intentional pass to Owings with two outs in the tenth. And if you're thinking about the possibility of a pinch hitter for Tuffy, uh, David Peralta and Danny Dorn available from the left side of the plate. And with that in mind, Don Mattingly has a lefty warming up in that Dodger bullpen. Diamondbacks 0 for 3 with three strikeouts with runners in scoring position. And Tuffy goes to wish is walking back to the dugout here. Looks like Danny Dorn has grabbed a bat. So goes a wish recalled, and we'll see Danny Dorn, who had his first major league hit here Friday night, the native Californian from Diamond Bar, in front of family and friends here at Dodger Stadium. This would be a good time for number two right here. Paco Rodriguez, the left-hander, is warming to the Dodgers. Danny from Diamond Bar, California, played at Cal State Fullerton, where he was a teammate of the Dodgers' Justin Turner. And here he is in the 10th with two on and two out in a scoreless tie. Uh, Mattingly up on the top step. And he wants A.J. Ellis to go out to the mound to buy a few more pitches for Paco out there, who looks ready. Hale recalls his hitter, sends the lefty up there. And Don Mattingly will make the move right here and go to his left-hand pitcher. Checks in with Mark Ripperger. Yeah, Mattingly pointing back at his own dugout there. I'm not sure exactly uh, what he's doing here. With the double switch they made with Van Slyke, the pitcher spot has already been cleared in the ninth inning. 
And the pitcher is hitting fifth right now in the LA order. And now Mattingly will take the formal walk across the line and signal for Paco Rodriguez. So Dorn is up. Rodriguez coming in. Pitching change back after this. was the scheduled hitter after the intentional walk to Chris Owens. Danny Dorn was announced as the pinch hitter, the lefty. Don Mattingly went to his bullpen to bring in his left-handed reliever, Paco Rodriguez. Dorn was recalled, and Jordan Pacheco will go up and take the at-bat. So after all that, it'll be Rodriguez and Pacheco with two on and two outs. See the numbers for Rodriguez this season, ERA 169. Opponent's batting average 167. I think all things considered, this uh, is a matchup that uh, you prefer over even Danny Dorn against uh, Sergio Santos. Jordan Pacheco uh, has had extensive experience as a pinch hitter off the bench at the major league level. Has shown an ability to get the bat on the ball, put it in play. That's all you need right now. Yeah, he is very good in this role. He's got Goldie at second after the double to lead off the inning. Owings, the two-out walk. And Pacheco will hit. Pitcher spot is two up eight. That's next for the Diamondbacks, and Aaron Hill is in the on-deck circle. But here we go with Pacheco and Paco. Two on, two out in the tenth. Of course, he's got that funny delivery. We just got to hold the ball back up there like the old Statue of Liberty play, and then... Delivers to home plate. A 295 career pinch hitter, Jordan Pacheco. Second, bottom 10 coming up, still scoreless.
plus all the highlights from tonight's MLB games. You can see Fox Sports Live tonight, 8 o'clock on Fox Sports 1, or see it simulcast right here on Fox Sports Arizona following the World Poker Tour show. Paul Goldschmidt, a double to lead off the 10th. The Trumbo struck out. Tomas struck out. They walked Owens, and Pacheco grounded out. Jordan will stay in the game and take over behind the plate for Tuffy Gozowicz. Andrew Chafin back out there. Andre Ethier, Juan Uribe, and A.J. Ellis in the L.A. 10th, 6, 7, and 8. Ethier has been on base twice today, a walk and a single. Second consecutive day, he pitched two thirds of an inning in yesterday's ball game through 11 pitches. That was number 23 right there. It's two balls and two strikes. Good slider that time from Chapin. There's a good chance this will be the only hitter he faces in this inning. We'll see how Chip Hale wants to play it, but with a string of right handers coming up after Ethier and Enrique Burgess loose out in the bullpen. This will get to the corner and right. Ethier takes the turn. Trumbo plays it off the bounce. And the winning run is at second base for LA with nobody out. Ethier aboard for the third time this afternoon. See if the Diamondbacks pitching staff can do what the Dodgers staff did in the top half of this inning. Gave up a leadoff double, but no damage done. This one gets down in the corner, rattles around a little bit before Trumbo eventually picks it up. But Ethier content to stay at second with a double. Chip Bale out to talk to Mark Ripperger now. Will go to the right hand throwing Enrique Burgos. It's a double switch for the Diamondbacks. Aaron Hill is coming out with a glove now. And he will replace Yasmani Tomas at third base. And Chafin exits as well. So Chafin and Tomas out, Burgos and Hill in. Dodgers threatening here in the 10th.
teams and their benches. Another double switch by the Diamondbacks skipper here after the Andre Ethier double to lead off the bottom of the 10th. It's rookie right-hander Enrique Burgos thrown right into the deep end of the pool here at Dodger Stadium, his third major league appearance. And he's in there with a winning run at second base and nobody out. He'll work to Juan Uribe. Aaron Hill has come on. He takes over at third base for Yasmani Tomas. up the bunt that's in foul ground strike one Enrique Burgo six saves and seven scoreless outings with double a mobile just called up last week there's Aaron Hill in at third for Tomas and he's in a big time mess right here coming in from first that pitches upstairs it's a ball and a strike Uribe one for three a single in the fifth he's hit in 12 straights squares to bunt again Goldie coming in from first Almost gets away from Pacheco back there, and Ethier's back in the bag at second. Out of that mitt, popped straight up in the air. Fortunately for the D backs, came right back down to Jordan. I'll skip a beat. Earlier in his career, Juan Uribe, believe it or not, was actually a good bunt. Hasn't been asked to do it very often. Where's the bunt again here? Pops it up one more time. That's in the seats. About 10 rows back, it's two and two. <laughs> Lorenzo Bundy. No, Manuel hit away now. Go ahead. Big strikeout for rookie Enrique Burgos. One away in the 10th. Huge out and a great pitch. Juan Uribe is a good breaking ball hitter if it's in the strike zone, but that one was down low with a lot of late movement. Good pitch. Now, A.J. Ellis is scheduled up for the Dodgers. He will go back to the dugout. And the switch hitting Yasmani Grandal, who has all his power from the left-hand side, will step in and hit for Ellis. Rondahl just under 220 for the year. He's still driven in only two runs all season long. Mike Harkey will pay a visit now. Rondahl was hitless in the series opener here Friday night. Went into last night's ball game, stuck in a four for 28, but he had three hits and four at bats last night and scored a run. Ethier the winning run at second after a leadoff double. One out, and Grandal hits for Ellis. You can see the platoon splits. All the power comes from the left-hand side. Ball one at 97 from Burgos. Base open and a right-handed hitter in the on-deck circle. 
After that tardy swing on a fastball, you may choose just to go after Grandall. And Slyke on deck. Grandall has been slumping all year. He spent most of April batting fifth in the order. Dropped down to seventh in the first two games of the series. And hitting for Ellis, it's one and one. Goes 3 1. You got to go ahead and walk Grandall. Getting that good hitter's count like that. Got a base open. Sets up a potential inning ending double play to just go ahead and put him on. The only run that matters is standing at second. Yeah. There's ball three. Put a pitch to him here. and it's ball four. It's the second walk issued by Diamondbacks pitching this afternoon. And here's Scott Van Slyke. That won't go down in the scorebook as an intentional walk, but it was pretty clear that uh, Mike Harkey's instructions to Jordan Pacheco and Enrique Burgos, don't give him anything good to hit. We don't care if we walk him here. Van Slyke, 394 on the year. An RBI single in getting the start last night that extended his hitting streak to 10 games. And a pinch hit two run single Friday night. That one misses its. Uh... <laughs> Ethier is the runner at second. Grandal aboard at first. One out in a scoreless tenth. Foul right by third base. Uh, Ethier at second base, uh, average speed at best. In extra innings, however, of a nothing nothing ball game. Lorenzo Bundy's going to wave him home on anything hit to the outfield here. The Diamondbacks have good arms across the outfield, especially Trumbo in right, Inciarte in left. A ball and a strike. One and two. Four-year-old rookie right-hander Enrique Burgos. Pitching in double-A Mobile this time a week ago. And he strikes out Van Slyke. Two down. Slider, Vance Light just swings right through it. Was looking for something harder than that. Out in front a little bit. Well, it's Jock Peterson time again. He's 0 for 4 with three strikeouts this afternoon. He had the big grand slam in the second inning here Friday night. The solo homer in the seventh that tied the ball game last night. And he's up there in the bottom of the tenth with two on and two out. Big out to get for Burgos. Ninety-eight, zero and one. Good location too. Inside part of the plate. He has been taking some wild swings here this afternoon.
He has homered four times in his last five games. 0 for 4 so far today. One and one. Late time granted by Mark Rippinger behind home plate. Two balls and one strike. Owings is there to collect it. And how about a hand for rookie Enrique Burgos? Two strikeouts and a ground ball ends the threat. We go to the 11th inning, still no score. Jack Lake's beef jerky. Feed your wild sign. Feed it. 11th inning. Diamondbacks had a leadoff double in the top of the 10th. The Dodgers had a leadoff double in the bottom of the 10th. Neither team could advance the base runner, so here we are. Scoreless in the 11th to Paco Rodriguez back out there for him. Osmani Grandal stays in the game and takes over behind the play for A.J. Ellis. Aaron Hill, who was double switched into the game, replacing Yasmani Tomas at third, will lead it off. So Hill, Pennington, and Enciarte, 8 9 and 1 in the Diamondback 11. Aaron in there at 185 on the year. He homered in last night's ball game, 1 for 4. This was Aaron Hill to lead off the fourth last night off Scott Baker. Videotape by the fan that caught the ball right there. Oh, yeah. Roll the second right to Kimber. Brings up Flip Pennington. Number four. 
Cliff Pennington. Well, we had a leadoff double and couldn't get Goldie on the plate in the last inning. Maybe we'll make two outs, nobody on score. Whatever it takes. Whatever man. it takes at this point. <laughs> Then he came into the ball game in the eighth inning, struck out in his only at bat. Dodger bullpen is busy. Juan Nicasio, who threw three innings last night and got the win in relief, is warming up for the Dodgers, but he was tremendously effective and threw only 29 pitches last night, 20 for strikes, so I suppose he could give Don Mattingly at least one inning back there. Penny trying to bunt for a base hit, but it's fouled back. Juan Nicasio was a tremendous last night. Retired all night, he faced two strikeouts. Popped up near the right field line. Gonzalez backing up. He's got to get Kyle Brown. Two down for Ender Inciarte. Number five, Ender Inciarte. Ender had a base hit in the fourth against lefty Brett Anderson. He's in there against another lefty here in Paco Rodriguez. One for four so far today. Yeah, if Ender's able to reach, you'll almost certainly see Nicasio come in from that Dodger bullpen once again with all the righties lined up after Ender Inciarte. Rebay comes in on the grass at third. a ten-inning crowd max apparently after the Dodgers couldn't get Ethier home from second a lot of the Dodger fans took home trying to beat the traffic here just after 430 local time two and one you know traffic on Sunday in LA <laughs> you'll be fine <laughs> plenty take, of time take you 15 20 minutes tops Dodgers off to Milwaukee after this ball game. Four games against the Brewers in Miller Park. Kershaw pitches tomorrow. D backs head to Denver for three against the Rockies. And Sinarte waves at that one. And Rodriguez works at 1 2 3 11. Bottom 11 coming up. Diamondbacks and Dodgers still no score.
road. It was in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago, and Josh Colmenter at one point, who was scheduled to start the next day against the Giants, was warming up in the Diamondback bullpen. He is scheduled to start tomorrow in Colorado, and we are running out of pitchers. Enrique Burgos back out there after his tremendous performance in the 10th. He'll start the 11th against Rollins, Kendrick, and Gonzalez, 2-3-4. We have seen Oliver Perez, Randall Delgado, Andrew Chaffin, and now Enrique Burgos in the Diamondback bullpen. 1-1. Burgos was tremendous in that 10th following the Ethier leadoff double. He struck out Uribe, walked Grandal in what looked to be a pitch around, struck out Van Slyke, and then got Peterson to ground out to end the threat. Ahead of Rollins, one and two. Madison Reed had been throwing earlier in the ball game. That went through Pacheco behind the plate, 97. One issue you have when a guy throws as hard as Burgos does when you miss your spot all the way across the plate, it's, it's tough to make an adjustment, get over there and keep it from hitting the backstop. A hard thrower, Enrique Burgos, last year in Visalia, 14 strikeouts for every nine innings pitched. Rollins stays alive. Big guy out there, 6'4, 250. Panama signed with the Diamondbacks when he was 17. This is at 97, and it's a full count, three and two. Kendrick on deck, Gonzalez after him. to first, right to Goldie. One away in the 11th. Number 47, Allie Kendrick. Goldie in exactly the right spot. Wasn't guarding the line, but cheating a couple of steps closer to that right field line, and Rollins obliged and hit it right to it. Allie Kendrick, this one out double in the ninth that Trumbo couldn't pick up on the warning track out there. He tried to stretch it into three, but look at Tomas defend the end zone right there, planting himself in front of third base, and Kendrick ran into a big out. And the Dodger, one and two hitters, Peterson and Rollins so far today, 0 for 10 with a combined six strikeouts. The 0 1 to Kendrick. Pulls him there and drops it in for a strike. It's 0-2. That Kendrick play was a big one. And Kendrick has probably been watching Burgos from the bench over there on the third base side, seeing those 97, 98 mile an hour fastballs, and Burgos starts him with two breaking balls for strikes. There's your heater. And then blows him away at 98. Third strikeout for Enrique Burgos. Number 23. It's got nothing to do with control and command. Just rear back and throw it hard somewhere towards the backstop and blew that one right by Howie Kendrick. He's got one more big out to get. Mike Harkey going to remind him of that here as Adrian Gonzalez steps in. Gonzalez singled in the fourth. He reached on an error his last time up. As he hit into the shift, Yasmani Tomas was playing third at the time over at the second base area. Couldn't make a play. It was rolled E5. And Owings will back way out into right field at second base. And Aaron Hill, now playing third for Tomas, moves over near the second base bag. There's Hill near the bag. Owings way out there in shallow right. Gonzalez at 366 on the year.
98 is in there for a strike. Stay right out there. I'm sure part of the meeting by Mike Harkey was uh, don't give this guy anything he can pull into the bleachers out there. Just stay away. If he wants to take a single to the opposite field, let him. Oh, and two. All upper 90s from Enrique Burgos. This one is 98. You see where Pacheco sets up. Right out there at the corner, a little bit down. Enrique Burgos, his fourth strikeout. He gets the side in order, two, three, and four in the bottom of the 11th inning. The rookie right-hander having himself a big afternoon, and he sends us to the 12th at Dodger Stadium. Chip Hale manage this game, manage his roster, and manage his bullpen in concert with Mike Harkey. It's been a constant dialogue, as you can imagine. One of the coaches just yelled out a little while ago, let's go to the power game, but that obviously didn't result in anything. But I'd like to rescind everything I said on the pregame show about this place being a launching pad during the day. <laughs> obviously, I have no clue what I'm talking about, but this has been a, a very, very meticulously managed game. Of, in this dugout over here, Bob, I'm sure you can appreciate that with all the moves that, that uh, the chip is continuing to make. Yeah, and we're getting to the point now where there's not going to be many moves left to make. Chip Hale has one position player available off the bench, David Peralta. He does have Marshall Hudson, Ziegler, and Reed still available out of the bullpen if necessary. Enrique Hernandez takes over at second base, part of a double switch. Came into the ball game along with the new pitcher, Juan Nicasio. He will hit fifth pitcher spot now, third in the L.A. order. A.J. Pollock leads it off against Nicasio, who got the win in relief last night. Nine up, nine down, three scoreless innings. He had two strikeouts and threw 29 pitches. A.J. 0 for 4 so far. So it's Pollock, Goldie, Trumbo, 2, 3, and 4 in the Diamondback 12. Well, the Diamondbacks had no answers for Nicasio here last night. And he jumps ahead of A.J. 0 and 2. Colorado Rocky. Six hits for the D-backs, five for the Dodgers. Still looking for our first run. D-backs had a leadoff double in the top of the tenth. Dodgers had a leadoff double bottom tenth. Their team could advance the runner, and here we are in the 12th.
Two and two. AJ just one hit in the series. He was one for four Friday in the series opener. Full count. continue their shift against A.J. Pollock. Kiki Hernandez, the second baseman, is playing right behind the second base bag, so they overload the left-hand side a bit for A.J. Strike three, power fastball at 95. Maybe caught the inside corner. Trying to get a base runner and work the leadoff walk. It's a tough strike three call. Here's Goldie, two for four, a single in the fourth. He doubled his last time up, but was left stranded at second base. It's in the gap in right center field. Peterson over to cut it off, and Goldie will stop it first. His third hit today. Number 15, Mark Trumbo. Go ahead, Goldie had thoughts about turning the corner and trying to go two. If Jock Peterson hesitates at all, getting that ball back into the infield, he might try for two. Ball was headed toward the gap. Peterson cut it off, and you can see Goldie slam on the brakes. A little awkwardly right there at the very end. Mark Trumbo, one hit in the series. That was a single back in the second. He is one for four today. He struck out twice. Seventh hit for the Diamondbacks. And their first strike, 0 to 1. Trumbo, two for six lifetime against Nicasio. Both hits left the ballpark. This game is going. It might take something over the fence. Still waiting for that mistake I talked about back in the seventh inning of a nothing nothing ball game. I said it usually hinges on some kind of a mistake, either a physical error or a mental error. So far, both teams have done what's necessary to keep that score at 0 0. 0 oh, 1 to Trumbo. Pitcher spot is due up next for the Diamondbacks. David Peralta is in the on deck circle. There's his track. It's 0 2. Pitcher spot now fifth in the Diamondback order. There's Evan Marshall and Addison Reed. Evan got the loss last night. Bounced over the mound. Rollins steps on the bag and takes another play. That ends 
the Diamondback threat and sends us to the bottom of the 12. We are still scoreless at Dodger Stadium. down especially make better pitches with two strikes and that's that's what I'm looking for right now is that strikeout when I have the uh, the count in my favor um, last year I was able to just execute that 0-2-1-2 pitch where I could take a shot and uh, like tonight against Turner and against uh, Kendrick with two strikes I pulled the breaking ball so far out of the zone it wasn't even worth swinging at well, Evan Marshall got the loss last night. Chip Hale said after the ball game, it's a guy that we need to get right. And Chip said we are probably going to bring him back, pitch him a little earlier in the game, and try to make sure that he can be consistent because he'll throw two, three, four really good located pitches with good sink, and then all of a sudden he'll let one get away. But uh, this is not exactly a low leverage situation. They don't have much choice here. Uh, getting down to it as David Peralta comes in to play left field, part of the double switch, he will lead off. Ender Inciarte moves over to right field. Evan Marshall talking about some of those pitches that he jerked way over in the other batter's box. You want to give the illusion of a strike when you're ahead in the count. Throw one around the corner of the plate with some movement off the plate. Give the hitter the idea that that ball is going to be in the strike zone, and then by the time he swings, it's out of the zone. Evan's problem lately is that they start out of the zone and stay out of the zone. Kike Hernandez. Critical guy, Diamondback fans learned that last year. Evan Marshall outstanding as a rookie reliever. And Chip Hale said after the ball game last night, we have to get him back to that. And Evan, the stand up guy, faced the media last night and said, You just don't want to get out there and let things kind of snowball. And they snowballed on him, and they have been lately. But a chance to right the ship here after a good rookie season last year, a 2.74 ERA. But this year, the ERA near 7.5. This is foul ground. It might stay fair first base side for Goldie. And Hernandez is the first out here in the 12th. Number 16, Andre. Marshall said last year he was able to keep the ball down and especially make better pitches with two strikes. And that's what he's looking for, that strikeout when he's got the count in his favor. He says the stuff feels good, the velocity is there, his arm feels good. And he insists it's just a matter of reading the hitter and making better pitches. Malethier has been aboard three times today, a walk, a single, and a double. He doubled the lead off the 10th, but was left stranded there.
Start 95 for a strike. Six right by him, it's one and two. And the Marshall still has great stuff. High velocity fastball with some sinking tailing action at the very end. We've seen Perez, Delgado, Chafin, Burgos, and now Marshall. Bounce to first, that's a fair ball for Goldie, calls off Marshall. Two up, two down. And it'll bring up Juan Uribe. carved in stone, but the general feeling is in an extra inning ball game, just stay away from a hitter's power. Make them beat you to the opposite field. Don't run the risk of making a mistake on the inside part of the plate where Uribe could possibly pull a ball down that left field line. He does have pull power, does not have much opposite field power. A single in the fifth, he is one for four. He has struck out his last two at-bats. There's a strike. inning or two and that shadow that's creeping up behind home plate is going to start to cover the batter's boxes. Here it is. and breaking balls to the wrong side of the plate. That's what he did on that fastball right there. Just hung on a little bit too long. Over the glove of Marshall. Owens has it behind the bag at second, and Evan Marshall comes in, works a 1-2-3-12. Well, David Peralta will lead it off for the Diamondbacks. We are still scoreless in L.A. as we head to the 13th inning.
start the 13th inning with the eighth different Los Angeles pitcher here this afternoon. It's the left-hander J.P. Howell. So Howell, earlier in this series, he pitched in Friday's series opener, went one inning, 15 pitches. Seems like we see J.P. Howell just about every game against the Dodgers at some point. Sometimes just as a matchup lefty, other times trying to get a little bit of length out of him. Well, David Peralta, who checked into the game recently, took over in left field, will lead it off in the Arizona 13th. Peralta, 250 on the year. Bounces that one fair. Gonzalez is there. Howell hustles over. One pitch one out. Here's Chris Owings. Number 16, Chris Owings. COO for three this afternoon. He was walked intentionally his last time up. Second round of Dodger Dogs has made its way into the booth. <laughs> Brentley's going through them. <laughs> like, like a kid with a cookie jar. Ball Actually, parts. there are cookies there are here, cookies too. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went down there the, yesterday, I think it was, before the ball game to get a Dodger dog. Get in line. I turn around. Who's in line behind me? Bob Bradley. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ballpark steak, I'm telling you. Here's Zoe. On the ground to Rollins and shortstop. Well, to be quite frank, it's really the only thing good to eat here at Dodger Stadium. To be quite frank? Quite frank, yeah, Frank and Furter. You know, we go to these ballparks around the National League, and everybody's got a delicacy or a local uh, favorite, and then there are other things that you can eat that are still very good, but... Uh, Outside of Dodger dogs, mm, not so hot. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. It's, it's such a staple here. I guess no, nobody ever needs anything else. But unless you go into Tommy Lasorda's place, way out in right field. Jordan Pacheco. <laughs> there they are, ready and waiting for between innings. There's cookies here, too. It won't be for long. Aaron's over here crushing one. <laughs> you never did get to the mystery of why the bun is half the size of the hunter. Yeah, that is unusual. Well, we're in L.A. I guess you don't eat carbohydrates, right? It's not, not that there's any in the hot dog. Shadow now across the right-hand batter's box. Two down in the 13th, the scoreless tie, D-backs and Dodgers. See the way I look at it, all the other chemical additives in the hot dog itself offset the carbohydrates. JR from our staff here is, uh, well, hold on, what do you got? Oh, here we go. JR has turned this up back from the Clipper game yesterday. Two and one to Pacheco. This is in the hole and into left. The base hit for Jordan. A two on base runner for the Diamondbacks. Aaron Hill comes up. Perfectly placed that third base side. Juan Uribe guarding the line a little bit. Jimmy Rollins is cheating over toward the hole, but just can't get there. I don't think they would have had a chance to get Pacheco at first anyway. According to the Dodgers now, B.B., the term Dodger dog was coined by Thomas Arthur, a longtime concessions manager here at Dodger Stadium. And he wanted to borrow the concept of the old footlong hot dog from the Coney Island days. So that, in a sense, came over with the Dodgers from New York City. Nice work by J.R. here in the booth. Right on top of it, as usual. Best in business for nothing. So it's a... Homage, if you will, to the old Ebbets Field from the Island Brooklyn days.
wonder if our boy with the uh, video camera and the glove is here today out in the left field bleachers. I need something you, you want him to shoot? I want him to shoot another uh, Aaron Hill hey, there home he run. There yeah. he is. Yeah, get ready. He caught and videotaped Aaron's home run here last night. And Brian Henry was out there breaking the story, getting the video we showed it to you during the game last night. In fact, this is what it looked like. He's got a glove in one hand, the camera in the other, and here it comes. Yes! Game over in Chris. Sorry, Scott, I had to catch him. He's apologizing to Scott Van Slunk. He had to catch it. There he is. I guess he has to sit like that, rolling the entire time. Because you can't turn the camera on after the guy hits the ball. Too late then. Yeah, too late then. He sits there like that every single pitch. He's conceptualizing right now. He's also a trumpet player. Fingers going on that camera. Aaron Hill, the shift was on, and Aaron hits it into right center. Pacheco will take the turn and head for third. And the Diamondbacks have runners on the corners with two outs here in the 13th. Number four, Cliff Pennington. You see for Aaron Hill, a shift beater that time. Pitch stayed up and out over the plate. Grandall wanted it down and in, but Aaron stays right on it, shoots it toward that gap in right center field. Nice piece of hitting right there. The first diamond back to third base, and here we are in the 13th inning with two outs. It's Pacheco at third. Hill aboard at first, and the Diamondbacks looking for a big two-out hit from Cliff Pennington. The switch hitter will bat from the right-hand side against the lefty Howell. for his career about 10 points better from the left hand side he's about a 250 career left hand hitter but he handled himself pretty well from the right hand side of the plate last year hit 265 as a right and that's about 25 points over his career average one or one Nine hits for the D-backs, five for the Dodgers. Kicks away from Grandal. Here comes Pacheco, and he is out of there. They took their shot with two outs. And Mark Ripperger is telling the Dodgers to stay on the field. Chip Hale looking back to Glenn Sherlock. And the Diamondbacks may have a case here. Howell reaches behind him. Couldn't even see the runner. Just stuck the glove in there. Right in the shadow. And there will be no challenge. Rondal scampers over to his right. Howell covers, gets the glove behind right there on the backward blind swipe tag, and just doesn't get just does get it in there ahead of the leg of Pacheco. And we are still scoreless. Bottom 13 coming up.
glove hand in there just in front of the foot of Jordan Pacheco. Yeah, it's really just kind of a blind play running in there. You want to make sure and focus on the throw from the catcher and then just slap the glove down in front of home plate and hope the runner is there. Unfortunately, Jordan Pacheco slid right into the glove of J.P. Howell. It's a heck of a play by J.P. Howell. As Monte Grandal leads off the Dodger 13th, and the shift is on with Owens way out in right field. And Aaron Hill, the third baseman, over the second base spot. And a Marshall back out there for his second inning of work. After he pitched a 1 2 3 12. Monty Grandal has one career walk-off hit that came against the Dodgers last August 29th when he was with San Diego. Gets it in the air to left center field. This is hit well and gone. And the Dodgers win the ball game and sweep the series. Yasmani Grandal, he had driven in only two runs all year long. Dropped from the middle down to the bottom part of the batting order by Don Mattingly last week. And his walk-off homer wins it for L.A. 1-0 at 13. Well, really not a lot of opportunities for either ball club in this game. Well, it's going to come down to one big swing of the bat. Unfortunately, the wrong guys put the swing on well, he's a left-hand hitter, or a switch hitter. The left hand is his power side, we mentioned. All of his home runs last year, all 15 coming as a left-hand hitter. Nice. Home run here, wins it. And that'll do it for Los Angeles. The Diamondbacks lose 1-0 in 13. They suffer a, a three-game sweep here at the hands of the Dodgers, even though they out-hit L.A. 9-6, and it's off to Colorado for three against the Rockies starting tomorrow night. Well, Diamondbacks got healthy against the Rockies at home. Uh, tail end of that last homestand, hopefully more of the same as we go to the Mile High City. So another tough night here at Dodger Stadium for Evan Marshall. Yasmani Grandal, his home run. Leading off the bottom of the 13th, wins it for the Dodgers. From Tom Walt, from Mark and Bob Brindley, I'm Steve Berthew. Stay tuned next. The best of cup of coffee comes your way on Fox Sports Arizona. And we'll see you tomorrow night from Coors Field in Colorado. So long, everybody.